Hello, hello. Hey. Welcome to Cody with Simon and Friends. Yeah. Right. Where were where we at? This is like, like I saw you yesterday, John. It's, isn't that amazing? Yeah, it feels like, you know, 24 hours. It feels like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> some room. So uh, we were trying to do some scrolling code. And we when we tried to do some scrolling code, I completely lost my mind because I missed dinner. So, well, you know, it was late in the day for you. And so it was pretty late. It was time to get some dinner. Yeah, and... <laughs> so, I think now we're uh, starting a little bit earlier. We can uh, actually get something productive done. So, we were trying to do a couple of things. I think, um, I guess there's uh, there's a notion of what we want to do in like terms of maybe having the character move, yep. um, land on. La actually, I made a list. Where's my list? I have no idea where I put my, oh, it's my list. Yeah, yeah, we're working on like trying to figure out how we want it to move versus scrolling the background and all that. Okay. And then we can worry about collisions and all the other fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's make sure, let's make a camera entity, which, yeah, most, was it Matt? Sorry. Matt, yeah. And with double T was suggesting we do that, which is a very good idea. And uh, we should have done that already. So let's 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 just get going on this. Um, <laughs> for those that want to play along from yesterday, we have a code. I will post the link in the chat briefly. So let's go. There's the link. I forget who's got that. Um, right. Let's see if we can get this going. No, that's the wrong thing. That's the right thing. Share screen somewhere. Someone would think I was prepared. <laughs> right. There we go. Get rid of that banner. There we are. Make some room. All right. All right, all right, all right. There we go. So um, this was what we we kind of just threw this map together. So we got a um, a open uh, an open set of um, art by Helper Wesley, I guess, and um, this was on uh, Itchio. And um, so we're just going to use this as our temporary graphics, at least for the time being. This gets us going. Um, the tile set should make a difference to what we're actually trying to build. We should be able to change this and then we just edit the map and then we can, the nice thing about doing this is once you've built your game engine, the idea is that your, your level data, you can just keep making levels and more levels and then, right. you know, it'll all continue to work. And then what you might do is have tweak some specific game logic just for those individual levels to give it a bit of buzz. But normally, you know, you might put, different the same enemies exist for the entire game but you only put the easy ones in level one the medium ones in level two and so on so that as the user gets used to playing the game it gets more difficult more challenging and so on mm -hmm. <clears throat> right let's run this and see where we got to um something i do want to do today is put i think 
let's, let's have some goals. Let's have some goals. The first thing I need to do, I think, is although the gamepad was great, no one else can really follow along without being on Windows. Right. So I think a portion of what I want to do, at least at the beginning here, is just extract out that, that Windows code into its own little um, piece and then have a another type of input. Yeah, like just arrow keys or this, yeah, exactly. the AWSD or whatever, you know, the typical. Yeah. 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 So I think that's probably the first thing we should be doing. So let me... So uh, it used to be called raw keyboard, I think, but keyboard, I think it got replaced. Uh, yeah, raw keyboard is the legacy API. It is down yeah, to hardware keyboard. Yeah, so yeah. It's hardware keyboard. And I noticed this the other day. Um, who was I? I think it was John. Um, John Cummings. He, he oh. said, uh, when we were looking through, sorry, not you, John. Uh, yeah. John. Um, <laughs> we, he said there was a problem with one of my, uh, with the Blizzard example we did a while back, and I pushed a, a fix for it. Let's see if I can. Yeah cut our time short by just grabbing the little bit of code I did for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So let's see. So basically, this is the start of a, if anyone wants this, this is like a start of like a 3D game or anything else you might want to run. So I'll pop that in the chat as well for those that want to maybe have a, have their eyes over that. If I can yeah. find it. So there we go. But anyway, um, so in here, somewhere in here, uh, it wasn't Blizzard, it was in Maine. It's just an example. Um, yeah, here we go. So we have made this like brief input manager. Oh, yeah. That. Perfect. Um, well, yeah, we'll put that as part of the engine. Input manager. All right, let's have a quick look at this. So <clears throat> if I can import it. Hmm. key event result why is that declared oh focus manager right right right, yeah. right, right. all right so <clears throat> so i did this uh, so i found out that on windows when you press uh when you press on the keyboard if you're using the raw keyboard listener, it would no longer it would beep all the time because it would think you weren't taking the keys. Oh. So we don't go back to the operating system that we handle the key press huh. okay. because there was no requirement to do so on the mobile stuff when that was first invented. Right. So yeah, the yeah, new sense. system requires you to report back that. So what we're going to do, that's essentially what this function does here. We go is the logical key W, then move forwards is press, move backwards is press, move left, move right, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. What we should be able to do is integrate a vector instead of these booleans, which make more sense for a game. Right. These booleans was an example. And then we need a way of initializing this and disposing of it. And then we'll be able to access this input manager from where we are in the game. And I'm going to show you a nice little thing with zones. Most people don't know mm -hmm. about zones. Yeah. I'll shove a bit of knowledge in there. So in this case, hardware keyboard uh, add handler remove handler yeah add handler oh wait hey a minute no I don't want to do this to lie no that should work key event callback yeah is it handled or not yeah yeah right so we don't need to use a focus Whenever keys are pressed, held or release, a handler, add handler, will be notified with a specific part of the app. To only be notified with a specific part of the app is the focus, use a focus widget. Okay, so here's the thing. If we wanted to have 2D UI like menus done in Flutter, then we need to use a focus widget because we want any key presses and input to go to the menu widgets rather than the game widget. Right. So we need to play well with the not just steal the hardware keyboard directly and just 
Right. Because yeah. otherwise, what happens is if you want to use the up down arrows to go through the keyboard, let's say the menu, it would also go up down in the game <laughs> behind the menu. Uh, so I think we'll play nice and we'll use a focus widget. And then that way, um, I think that, that gets us where we want to go a bit easier. Um, I think that probably what would be better in this case is to maybe have a widget in here and declare like a, um, a stateless, yeah, input, input host, let's put it in input host. Uh, we might as well bring in material then. Or widgets, which is okay. Um, and then in here we can do a focus node and one auto focus true and an on keyboard on key event and finally a child. So what we're gonna do here, hello from Brazil. Hello Jessica. Yeah. Um, so I think child so we're basically making a wrapper with you here that provides the focus uh this child and uh will maintain an instance we could pass in an instance to be fair yeah. but, um actually no joe well that might be better so we just have input manager And then this becomes input manager dot on key of it. All right, so that's enough just to provide a quick little wrapper. Mm -hmm. And then we take this widget and we're gonna put that in our hierarchy of our game screen, wherever that is, here it is. So um, we just did that gesture detector file thing as a little, well, that'll be removed. But for the minute, let's yeah. wrap this with an input host. It's going to require an input manager instance. Uh, so we'll make one of them in here, and this can keep hold of it for now at least. We'll probably, again, I think I keep saying this, don't be afraid to uh, refactor, right? It's, it's all too often. All the time. Non stop. Yeah. I mean, There's, I think I guess there's a certain there's I guess there's a certain thing that you learn over time, which is like how to navigate code, know where code is, how it how it needs to be. You build a picture in your mind of like all of this kind of stuff. Yep. Um, right. So input manager. Pass that over. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got a focus widget auto focus with input manager. So we'll be receiving the inputs into that function. Input manager changes its state. However, what we don't have with our magical input managers it doesn't have a way of notifying people notifying anything the state has changed right yeah. if we wanted to we don't need that right now <clears throat> we do definitely do need a way of getting the current state <clears throat> also we can make this private now which is really nice uh so you have to use an input host to actually get the input into it that's nice huh? yeah all right so we said before having a vector so a vector two um uh, what do we call this? Play on control axis, input axis. And we'll make that here's the question. Do we want do we want yeah, do you know what? We're just gonna have it um on a read only. Annoyingly, a vector two is mutable, which means this doesn't make that much difference. But I think it's a good, good shout just to kind of practice, practice this. So, okay, so we uh, we have a late. In fact, we can set this to be vector two zero because it's mutable. <coughs> Okay, so we have our input axis, we have a way of getting it, and then 
Okay, so when you go W or should we have up as well? Let's do both. Mm -hmm. Okay, logical keyboard key, key up, is it, or something? Uh, up, arrow. Uh, arrow up. Here, yeah. Yeah. So D is uh, right. Uh, no, right. S is down. S is down, right? Yeah. Yeah. And okay. A is left. A is and left. Uh, underscore input actor. So we want to set. <clears throat> equal so if it's pressed then it's minus one of zero so that's uh sorry that would be a y sorry i'm assuming minus one is going up so up and to the left is negative if we uh, yeah well it depends on how we want to do it do we want to do or we want origin top left or bottom left is the question well, if we're starting in the bottom left, then I would all the time I would say origin should be bottom left zero zero. So, so we're going to need to invert our y axis at some point because because so flutter just for yeah. people who know what we're talking about when you use Cartesian coordinates x and y, um, normally x is going from zero on the left to positive x axis on the right. So that might be let's say that you're talking about hundred by hundred pixels, it'd be zero on the left, a hundred on the right zero on the top 100 on the bottom which makes zero zero the origin at the top left where it is on, on here on the stream over here right um and then it sort of uh, all your stuff would go down from there um now a lot of uh that's uh, there's a lot of um other 2d surfaces and they go from the bottom left going up like a chart like you might see a china graph zero zero is the bottom left and it grows up in the y-axis and the cross in the in the x-axis anyway so let's uh yeah let's let's carry on so uh s bin down that'd be one a left uh, in the x and positive one right We'll give it a go and we can always flip them if we don't. So basically yeah. the idea here is if you're not pressing the key anymore, it goes back to zero on that axis. You can't be going left and right at the same time. So it's the last, the way this works currently right now is the last key you press wins. So if you're holding down A, you go left. And if you, as soon as you press D, you start going right and it ignores the A. And when you lift up A, it actually stops the character because it's whatever up. So resets it to zero. Yeah. So yeah. again, you can see how handling the behavior of the input can also change the behavior of your game. All right, enough data. Let's get this working. So, all right. So we have an input manager. We have an input access. We have a way of getting that data into the app. Um, let's hand input manager over to game. Would well, you think game should own the input manager? That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Because then we're about to get and get one. So yeah, because you're going to need it all over the place and. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So I mean, that one uh, reference. So if we create one here on every game instance in the engine, which makes sense, I guess. Yeah. And then when it comes to the screen, instead of us holding on to our own instance, see what I mean about refactoring? <laughs> like, <laughs> don't be too, too, you know, afraid to change your mind. You know, game, put input manager. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna move out the gamepad. I'm gonna in fact, you know what? I'm just gonna ignore the gamepad stuff right now. So our implementation of game, which is our Snow Dash game, is the one that chose to have gamepad, right? So what I'm gonna do, um, if we just don't even you know instantiate it, then you won't ever be calling the APIs. And in fact, we could actually go one step further. We'll just comment it out for now. Uh, so we can bring it back in later this way if you download the game after i push this in a second you should be able to run it uh, yep. on a mac and in fact do you have do you, have, do you use a windows or mac john uh i'm the machine i'm on right now is windows but my i've got my macbook right over here so. okay. 
But yeah, I mean, this, uh, it's just an opportunity once we get further along to have a setting screen and being able to flip between using whichever one you want. Yeah, yeah exactly, right? You could then uh, choose to choose where we get access from and everything. Right. And yep. yeah, that, that would be about putting, uh, like, input manager should be the thing that's actually instantiating the gamepad if you chose gamepad as your setting and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I, I give a good example of this, sorry, that most games have, um, is that when you have the remap redo, very definition of inputs. So you might say, like, we just did WASD. We've yeah. hard-coded it into the game right now. But then we could lift that out into get retrieving a value from a configuration. And then you could have a menu where you can change what keys do what inside the game. Uh, yeah, and I just see uh, Marco say so you finished doing your glowing logo. Yes, he's I did. Yeah, I've got to I've got to do some work to kind of hide that cord. I think I'm going to run it through the wall, or better yet, I think I'm just going to not use the big thick cord and use some thinner uh, and I just mean, connect that and then paint it the wall color. And then you just say paint it. the wall color. That would be the easiest, right? Yeah, because you probably can't see it because of the light. But right up here, there's two wires connecting the bottom. LED to the top one, um, uh, but uh, and they're black, so I'll probably paint all those black wires and make the bottom one smaller so that it just looks like it's up there. And then to the other side over here, eventually, yeah. I'm going to get the uh, the Microsoft logo next to it. Nice. I'm going to do that. That one's the easy one because it's just a bunch of squares. And so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is not a 3D print. It is wood. So I um, I found some spray paint that was pretty close to the actual flutter colors, um, but uh, not exactly because I wasn't going to custom mix, but uh, worked out well. Um, and then it's just two pieces of wood cut out with some wood behind it, raising it off the wall and some LED strips. So. Right. Uh, so game is the game pads. <laughs> Now we can just replace, replace this with input manager. And, and to answer Jessica's question, I, I know a little bit. I know it's coming. Um, I've actually offered to help them on the SDK uh, for clarity for Flutter. So hopefully soon. I don't know exact timelines or anything like that, but I know they're working on it. Yeah, player one access. I like that more. Yep. So we now got input in in any in any entity, and we should therefore be able to go into here. And uh, we haven't set up some buttons, but we'll do that in a second. Uh, okay. So instead of gamepad state, we can choose to get the input player one access, and that becomes our direction vector actually. So all the whole position thing should continue work. So all we need to do is let's make dash turn red when a trigger button is pressed. We can have a fire button here. Yeah? Input dot player one fire action. Okay, and then if we add a key in here, <coughs> what do we want as our action button? Uh, I don't know, typically what, space bar or enter, one of the two, I think is the common. So again, something that's quite interesting, we only, because we don't, um, what we might need to do with this one is do, um, let's do a note in here um, to do, perhaps reset flag once red. Um, so what I mean by that is, so at the moment, yeah. If we hold down the space bar on every frame, it's mm -hmm. going to think the action button's been pressed. 
because we yeah. call this on every frame. So what you might want to do is once you've read and you've actioned it, then you reset it. So we could have a reset function as well, so that once any frame runs it, it resets it. But yeah, let's leave that as a note. All right. All right, all right, all right. Right. Yeah, otherwise you got to get into handling right. like key up, key down. And... Okay, shall we run it and see what happens? Hot restart. Yeah. Everybody cross your fingers and... Uh, let's clean this up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Good crash. It's over here. Right. W. Whoa. <laughs> there she goes. There she goes. Uh, that was interesting. All right. Let's press D. Oh, that's the uh, the redraw. I think our drawing is causing issues there. No, I'm just tapping it slowly because I'm trying to understand. It's, why is it jumping back? <laughs> okay, that wasn't what I was expecting. Uh, so that's, I guess, good to know. Um, <laughs> ah, ah, ha, ha, ha. It's exactly what I thought. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's modifying the existing one that's there. We need to clone. So oh. we're doing multiply on the on the vector that we get back, mm -hmm. which yep. means it would integrate in the multiply over time. Yep, yep. All right, let's try again. W. Hey. No, got it. There we go. It's all backwards, but it's backwards in a good way. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold down the beans to go around. Okay. Okay, that's good. And space turns in red. Yeah. All right. Or oh, her red. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So that's good. Um. Okay, so access wise, let's flip these and then we can work out what we want yeah. later. If how we wanna you know, I go left, it goes left, I go right, go right, up, and down. Alright, and then I can use the arrow keys as well, yeah. And space bar and enter. Yep. Okay, cool. Finally, all right. Let, let's push that, and then we can back on, get back onto our lovely scrolling. Yeah. And everyone should be able to follow along too. Um, so we've got. I've not compiled this on a non-Windows machine, so um, you'll need to. In fact, let's let's do this here and just do um, Flutter create dot platforms I guess we could just choose them all couldn't we yeah no iOS, Mac OS. iOS and Mac yeah and Linux why not they're all the ones that I've not got set up on here I don't think yeah so I just chose Windows yeah um, all right uh, let me commit what I've got first and then we can so this is uh, yeah, add, that, uh, yeah. add input manager uh, for direct keyboard control player one okay and create these so you should be able to after this just anyone being should be able to check out the repo and then hit play and see what we see hopefully there and you if go. you get the tiled editor since i commit this into the repo as well you can change the map and see what happens all right Android, iOS. Did I refresh? I feel like it. You did say Linux and Mac. Yeah, did you, did you run it? Yeah. Uh, hang on. Desktop platforms, Mac and Linux are kind of not supporting your local environment. Oh, yeah. I know that. I don't need to generate the template files you burn. Right. Yeah, but you make ios I, how does that make sense you know it's like early on you couldn't you couldn't create right. a project if you weren't on mine okay so you, you know what you're know everything should have been downloaded we're yeah. gonna we're gonna put instructions in the readme <laughs> to uh to you might need to generate 
your platform specific files to run this app on this game on your local machine and use the following command from the project project directory. All right, problem solved. Uh, since I've not tried this, obviously on Android, we don't have keyboard. Well, you should work on the emulator because uh, it has the hardware keyboard. Uh, try it. That's the yeah. answer to this. Generate. Try it. Let me delete the test. We have more test. Right. Yeah, this be a hard one. You know what? Uh, what you'd almost have to do. How would you do it? You'd have to have your on-screen controls. If it's Android, then you get the right. little fake thumbstick overlay. Yep. yep. Yeah, we can do all that, but <clears throat> one step at a time, right? Right. We should probably put our feature. We put a feature list in here. Um, yeah. Features, and we could do like one of those check this, can't you? In there. So, um, I was actually thinking about this before because I want to. I port this over to, um, yeah. Uh, proper, <laughs> proper particle system. It's on my list here. Uh, we got some. Uh, let's put this in. Let, we'll put this in some order a minute. So scrolling slash uh, it's cam, yeah. Yeah. camera follow follower slash scrolling cam, camera camera. <laughs> uh, camera following scrolling. Um, Collision detection. Um, enemy uh, objects. Enemy yeah. Objects. yeah. Sorry. No. Yeah. Uh, enemy objects. Um, enemy enemies. <laughs> I mean, enemy <laughs> objects. Just like getting that kind of basic in there with with um, uh, with basic AI. Yeah. Uh, we've got a uh, sort of gravity uh, gravity slash physics mm -hmm. yep. simulation. Um, there's probably a settings or options at some point. I can't, you know, until we need some sort of setting, I'll put that on the bottom list, but settings slash yeah. options. Um, including, I guess, you know, we'll put a uh, welcome screen. Yeah. Menu screen. Or maybe it'll just, just, well, maybe splash welcome screen, menu screen settings, splash options screen. Um, Yeah, I don't think um, we want. Um, uh, I mean, I guess like once we've got like this kind of enemy stuff working. So follow the camera. Let's think. Just think how we can have this progress, right? Yeah. Camera follower. Yep. Collision detection, and then once we've got that in place, we can then do uh, platform. Um, We've got physics, and then you can do plat uh, platform intersection. I don't, know. I don't know what the best one is, but I guess platform collision detection. But yeah, whatever. I just mean that. So things like you know, there's uh, actually having it land, let the player land on this catcher, rather than you know, once you've got gravity, you want to do that, uh, and then also be able to like, maybe jump through certain platforms that you know. Yeah, you can get moved through and stuff like that. All right, anyway. Um, particle system, anyway. Sick. Yeah, I think that kind of covers what I've got written down here for now. Let's get rid of that. I'll use the thing now. All right, so I think that's our wish list. Anyone got anything they want to add? Uh, that's something about 
uh, how you win the game. Uh, so I guess that's maybe just in the intro. Win. Some you know, win condition. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Let me. Uh, sorry. Just... I have lost. <laughs> sorry. Uh, find. That's what. Banning someone from the from yeah. The, there we go. <laughs> I was gonna say we want to delete that one. Yeah, it's gone from the. It's gone from there. Right. Um. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on. Oh, sorry. We, well, yeah. So I think right now, like, once we got this kind of stuff, part like enemy AI, we could then have like, we can end I guess screen or something. Lives score yeah. system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, win, lose, yeah. Con win condition. Yeah, win condition or end game. And level, mm -hmm. and level progression. Mm -hmm. And then we can spice things up with the proper particle system. I think like, like you know, like, like when something gets hit by something, you can have like some things fly off and. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> All right, so let's get the first one knocked off. All right, let's get the first one done. Camera. So um, we talked about this before. Um, oh, actually, we do want you want to add. I want to add something else to that little list. I want to add a, um, a. Oh yeah. Clip layers. Um, so this is just we only. It's not really clipping. Um, so this is. Uh, oh, there's an name for that. Occlusion kind of um, basically for for one of a better word, we don't want to paint the tiles when they're not part of the screen bounds. Right. So it's not about painting them on then clipping them. We just don't want to even try and paint. It's just, them. Right. It's just painting the visible area only. Yeah. yeah. And we can do that once we've got the scrolling because once we know where it is, we know what visible area we want to paint. Yeah. So yeah, here only paint visible, visible. area of layers. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so uh, game. Well, we had uh, renderer, wasn't it? That's it. Renderer. This is where we were fiddling around with it before during mm -hmm. our little boxes. Yeah. Um, and I added the position of the where we're drawing the things to the actual layers, which I, I kind of regret doing right now because I don't think it helps. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Okay. okay. So we're about this, what we were talking about last night when we got to this it was um, so the way I might so the way you might do this, I'm trying to think of how I've done this a couple of times before. I can't remember how I how did it before, is having a um, What's considered the box for the level, which I've got mm -hmm. here, the uh, level box. That's the, uh, the, the extents. Yeah. This is the maximum extent that we can reach. Yep. And then we have the window of what we're seeing, and this would be this would be at the moment. This is fundamentally positioned at the yeah. So if we put the this. I think I know what I'm doing wrong, what we're doing wrong here. So bear with me. The window box, we want to always ideally sit around the player. Mm -hmm. Ah, so okay. So there's a there's a way that we want this to look at the end of it, right? Do, if we want a um oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, there is that. That's actually not a bad shout. Uh, there's also actually Mo uh, so Matt Matt, is it Matt? Sorry. Um, is also the fact that um, it's nice to say that, but also we don't really want to calculate the rectangles in the first place. Right. Um, so if we can avoid doing that, then we don't need to even cull anything. So <clears throat> not really, not until you've got like a really big level to really even care or lots of layers. So, um, so yeah, and if it was like Sonic, right, where I think the way I see this is very much like Sonic where, you know, you're, the camera's always following, following the player. But the problem here is you have this kind of notion that um, 
You want to integrate the ah, I know where the problem is. I don't know why I'm not, I don't know why I'm even doing this. This is completely the wrong way of doing this. <laughs> right. It's exactly what someone was saying before, but I wasn't paying attention. So so we have a camera, a camera entity. Uh, just like our player entity. Right? Yep. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this. Why not? And call it camera. All right. So the reason why I'm saying about this is that we want to integrate the camera movement over time. <coughs> so right. as the camera moves, sorry, as the player moves, it adjusts the camera. Yeah. And then we then in our update function in here, we can have it read the player, update its own position. And then when render takes place, it just renders the cap to, to the camera's yeah. position. Done. Yeah. That's cool. So um, <clears throat> that's where we're going to go with this. So, um, all right. So we have a camera. Um, it already has a position. Uh, that will be zero. We don't want a velocity, so that's fine. Uh, we'll leave that there. Uh, we want to get, we want to find the, let's go back to our renderer. I was putting in the, I don't even know why I was doing this in the render. Like this is just, yeah. I was being an idiot. Ah, hang on a minute. Yeah, this should be in okay, the wrong, wrong place. No, that's fine. Um, so we have our player and then we want to, for the minute, for, at least for the beginning right now, we, we're going to do this really simply and say, we want our position to be the same as the players. Yeah. To be set value uh, set uh, dot. Why are you no work? Uh, you can't do X one. Can you? Yeah, I think you can. That's why you could play a dot. Why? Play dot position. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. And then drawing wise, this is great because uh, we have our canvas and size. And what we mm -hmm. can do. So, <clears throat> something actually has been said before about cameras. I just want to explain this. I mean, I think you know this, Sean, but I'm kind of interested in your feeder. You kind of got this. Um, you can have the entire world rotate and move around the player. Mm -hmm. So our origin always remains zero, zero. We never change origin. Or we can tell the rendering that you're over here. So it, there's, there's, there's a, in the maths of, of the calculations, as it were, is are we always rotating and moving everything around zero? So yeah. a good example of this is you can think of it as everything is relative to the camera or everything is relative uh, to um, world coordinates, and the camera yeah. moves those world coordinates. There's a subtle, there's this very subtle distinction between the two, and there's reasons why you might want to do one or the other, depending on your game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's probably easier for us to use world coordinates right now. Yeah, I think so. Simple. Yeah, I may change my mind on that one, but was we'll right. <clears throat> I also think that we need to go back to having. Uh, a box for every entity, but we'll, well, let's get the camera working and then we'll come back to that. So right now, if I go to the renderer, we should be able to take our box drawing function, wherever the hell it is up here. There we go. Bring that into here. Ah, do you know what we could do? Do we create one red? When do we, where do we create? We create. Yes, can you can watch, watch later yes. on YouTube. Yep. For whoever's it's all recorded. Yep. Just, just look at the light. You want to look at the live tab on the YouTube channel. It'll be in there. Um, see, I create one long live renderer. Yeah. Uh, what you could also do is create a renderer per frame. For each one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then have it, then it can... So I look at this and go, well, I know what we're going to need. This is the wrong way to approach this right now. No. We're mixing. I didn't like this in the first place. And I still don't like it. Like, ideally, 
these there should be no flutter code in any of these functions like no flutter rendering code in any of this we shouldn't be mixing and matching yeah okay i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a little change here in fact look, okay look just remind me one second we'll do that right let's 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 get this actually painting first and then i'll show you what the improvement is and why we're doing it um <clears throat> so and we don't need to worry about an abb box right now so we can actually just do uh offset zero and size um Yeah, it's because we don't have a hierarchical entity system either. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, cyan, red. red. Yep. Okay, uh, and then let's go back to our renderer here. We're going to drop all of this. And obviously draw right. Yeah, see, even the background, this could be level background as an entity. Yep. That that reads the level there and paints this. Otherwise, you end up the whole point of how the entity system is that it gives you the flexibility to to do what we do with the widget system at the moment, which is um, using composition. At the moment, we're just chucking everything here into the render function, which defeats the purpose of right. the entire thing. Um, so there's a way that we can approach this that ends up being a lot more um, ends up being a lot better for us, right? Oh. Do you know what? This is yeah. No, I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Uh, so now what we need to do is add camera to our game. Um, let's add it at the beginning. We're probably going to want to reference that camera. Yeah. Same as player, actually. We go always go to find player. We could actually have player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. We only have one true size now. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Final camera. All right. So we want to add camera and player. So now we have a camera player and everything else. So if I restart, we should apparently break hot reload. Broke something. And fireworks <laughs> really break. Oh, it's not. There's no. Yeah, but also equally, this should be. Playing.
No. There we go. All right. So I can move the player around. And he moves around. Yeah. And then the camera yeah. is, as we can see here with the red border, is always where it should be. Great. And if you move him down, out well, of view. He'll just go off. Yeah. Like we're not, we're yep. not following it at all, right? Yep. Okay. So now, given that. Oh, wait. That's interesting. Oh, yeah, because I'm not using it to draw. Right? Ow, ow. So something we don't do. The position is there. It's not. It doesn't affect the drawing, right? It's up right. to position is just in memory so the question here is do we want our cat we could what we could be doing is then canvas dot translate entity position dot x mm -hmm. entity dot position y Um, I definitely want us to improve the way ren render rendering works, but let's just see how this behaves. There we go. So interesting. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Because at zero zero, yeah, he should be. Yeah. But they should be the further to the right. You move the further to the right. He should get in the box, right? Uh, we know the box top left should be where the player is, right? Because that's where I, we're, we're rendering yeah. here offset zero, offset zero based on the entities X and Y. Oh, you know why? Hang on, <laughs> yeah, I know that. Is that okay? Hang on, let's go back. I know exactly what's going wrong. We draw the player twice, so in our oh. render, we were rendering the player separate. Uh, weren't we? Uh, where is it in? No, it's in player, and uh, yeah, it's in player. Oh, it yeah. is the position to render here, yeah. All right, so there we go. So now it's centered and the box follows. Yay. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, we definitely need to figure out this input thing because we're you saying it to zero when it's when you hold down two buttons, just yeah, it's not ideal. Man wants to know why we're using multiple translates. What multiple translates? Are we doing the ball of, of our of our game in here, you mean? Well, we translate there, are we translating someplace else? We're not actually um yeah, we'll we'll, <coughs> we'll get there. So so the point here is we either translate use translate and then what happens is all the coordinates inside the paint on each of the entities is relative to the zero zero, just like a widget. It's kind of what's expected normally, right? So that means they're taking the global space when we paint them first, and then when the the paint function of the entity runs, it's local space. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> can we, should we just translate to the camera position once? I don't know what you mean by that. Sorry. Um, all right. So this this. This is working right now. Okay. So we've got two options. Uh, we can translate the. Hang on. <laughs> we want everything to be rendered from the camera's point of view. But the camera's point of view is in world corners and wants to change, right? So we can choose to find the camera in our renderer uh, ahead of time, translate everything to the camera.
and then everything relative to that is going to be drawn correctly. Am I thinking that right? It sounds right. Yeah. And then the logic for following the player. Yeah. So, all right, let's do this. Let's, um, we're going to process the level, see these layers. Okay, we're going to sort out the renderer in the pipeline I was talking about earlier, right? That way, <laughs> we're going to use uh, a similar pattern to the visitor pattern. Uh, so what, what I'm saying there is we get told when we're rendering from the front end, here's our canvas and size, which is great, but right. only the render needs to know about canvas and size. Yeah. Um, same as a game gets passed in, which I think we can probably... Something I want to come in from here. We'll have one of those. Okay, that makes, makes more, more sense. So we have a renderer for the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's just change the hierarchy of this. work out all of this so what we then do um, I don't particularly like doing this but I think it's probably the appropriate way is we do when we get asked to render we're gonna save uh, save uh, save these variables There's a slightly better way probably of doing this, which is um, we make um, an ob when rendered when the render pass starts, we make a frame, and a frame has a canvas and a size, and that's what you pass around. That ends up being the model, but it also means that you can then run the render on multiple frames and things like that. And, uh, but this is fine for the example right now. Yep. All right, and then <clears throat> we'll also have uh, bounds. I'll just put bounds. Okay, and then the idea is we're going to go for all the game entities and paint them. And I'm going to take the render out here. Good. Yeah. Um, and we're going to put that in the render itself. So when the renderer runs, it's going to get the game entities. Okay, it's a little bit convoluted, but I think there's a slightly better way of doing this. Well, it's, it's a mix of the two. So we say render, I mean, have a function. Uh, which is render entity. Right. Uh, what are we doing? That's not the way to do that. That's the way to do that. <laughs> Okay, then this is going to loop over and call that function on each one. Yep. Um, this keeps the list private and duplication in here, and keeps it, but it keeps the responsibility of rendering the actual entity outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in our renderer, we would then call. Um, game dot render and then entity. and maybe this is render all entities how about no
Ah, whatever, right? Hey, Scott. You can join us if you want. Oh, hey, Scott. <clears throat> John, John can send you the link. Yeah, I'll uh, shoot to you, Scott, in Slack. So, okay, so render all entities, going to go through, do whatever it needs to do to do that. And we're going to pass this as uh, to the renderer functions. And this is just going to take a renderer. Uh, now our renderer, yeah, is non game specific. That's good. Oh boy, he's got to go get his driver's license again today. <laughs> oh, he did that the other day. No, he said he didn't. Wasn't able to get it yesterday. Oh, uh, right. Okay, so coming back to all what I was just talking about. Now I've done this. We just need to know what do we actually want to render it? How do you want to render it? So if we make another in, another entity in our game, and we'll call it what, tile layer. Mm -hmm. I can't remember why I called the baseline now. Snow dash entity or something. Um, yeah, I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. And then this is going to be initialized from is it level level data and layer index. Sure. Do find a better way. Yeah. Pay attention to the road, Scott. Should, should try and <laughs> Listen to my voice. He just doesn't get enough. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay, so level data layer index, and then our ID becomes uh, Do you have a name on the levels? Um yeah. No, I don't think they're what are those are. It might be in there. Uh there's a next, well, there's a layer ID. What well, going to uh, layers? Yeah, yeah, but it's this thing. Uh, uh... Yeah, there's not really a level. Yeah. Well, that would be up to us then, but let's do, uh, let's yeah. just do layer and then layer index. Yeah. <sighs> right. Okay. Uh, when it initializes, we could actually pre-populate a bunch of the rectangles and various things that we need. Um, right now, what we're going to do is go back into here and do another entity in the game. Call it background. Now, when you're tile layer, yeah, are you thinking that's the entire? Uh, a Full layer area or a square? Oh, no, uh, the entire play area. Okay. I mean, we could start, depending on if we wanted destructible tiles, right? Because if we wanted if we wanted to do something like having it so that you can blow up parts of the level. And yeah, about, then they'd have to be individual. I would probably create them as individual entities, and then there's a better yeah. relationship with the game logic. Yeah. Um, all right, level data again. And background. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, didn't think about this, but we should probably, when we register, um, yeah, when we register a entity, we add it to a set, but the entity itself doesn't doesn't 
use uh, it's an override. Oops. Uh, yeah, let's do. on my keyboard, uh, code, generate, oh, insert, uh, ah, huh, all right, let's do it on position, and then I'm going to change it to ID, because, okay, so we consider it, The same if it's just an ID. Right. The IDs match, yeah. Yeah. Um, I almost want to do um, a type match as well. We'll do a one time type here, but I'm thinking about the hash code stuff. But I do objects. hash the ID along with the runtime type. Mm. No, you know what? No, we'll just leave it with ID. Let's just do that. Right, whatever. Yeah, there's no point in that. Yeah. All right, let's leave it with that. It's good enough for now. So at least they're not doubling up anymore. So if we try and add two yeah. backgrounds, it's going to fail, right? right? Because same ID, same for the layers. All right, let's get back to what we're doing all this stuff we don't need right so background go back to our renderer we want it to do this so we're going to cut that drop it in our here for a second and it's going to be level background and we're going to go back to renderer and then we got layers so we're going to we're going to um yes yeah, so we have this whole foreground thing right so we'll also want to say I guess that's how we order the entities because then we can then read it out. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back to where we were here. Render layer. So this whole render layer piece uh, is going to come out here and go into our render layer, just like that. Or just like that. I'm thinking we need level data because we might need some of the other information here, like tile width and height. Oh, yeah, at some point. Um, tile size, yeah, because we calculate that from the renderer, but that's okay. We could we could potentially fetch that from the renderer here. Um, all right, let's let's we'll calculate that in a second. All right, what's You know what? Let's do this with. Um, we'll, we'll probably change up, change this, but level layer, and then we'll see if we need the level size or in, index or whatever. And then our layer has an ID, right? Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. that, that seems a little better. Um, is anyone confused about what we're doing? I want some more information on those. Everyone completely lost. I know it's a bit of refactoring work, but. Essentially, we're making each entity responsible for rendering itself. Yeah. So now we've. So in doing this, um, we need to do a few things. So one is, we, the idea is to keep all of the actual rendering code in the renderer. So in this case, we can now say draw rect, right? And then this can have a vector two. Again, non-specific. The idea being that everything's not Flutter canvas rendering is external to the actual rendering. Uh, if you have questions, anyone, by the way, put them in the chat. And yeah, yeah, ask your questions and we'll get to them. 
Um, <clears throat> so uh, we have we could have two vector twos or an AABB. Do box like that. And I guess color. Uh, yeah, well, gonna draw, do... yeah, just to show where that is on the screen, yeah. So basically, this whole drawing code, this then becomes underscore canvas to render the current one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we convert our box to a rectangle with the extension that we did. Yep. Our paint color, our background color for level. Um, we do have colors one of those annoying things, right? Like it's part of yeah. it's part of various things, but it's also um, is just an integer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to be color color, and then yeah. All right, so there's there's a there's a simple draw function. That's about a comma in there. As a simple draw function for a rectangle. What uh, maybe this should be fill fill rect fill box. I don't know. Um, another one that we're using for player is draw image. Yep. And nice about this is we can put image asset in there, and, and then we don't have the dependency on images either anymore. That's nice. Shouldn't need it anyway. So draw image. And we're going to take an image asset. And then the, I guess, vector two position. Mm -hmm. Offset. Offset. Yeah. Uh, Underscore canvas. Oops. Yep, and then just put the offset dot to offset, and then asset. Um, we won't. Do we want a color passed in? Because remember, we're changing the color <laughs> when we get space. Yeah. So we we'll, need we'll it. Put in an optional color. Yeah. And if color is specified, then we'll uh, maybe this should be filtered color, color filter. I mean, we get into this realms of what do we want to separate, how we want to separate. But yeah. I think maybe this is a good option. We can just do something like. Maybe we only put that in there so that we could change it when you hit the space, but you know, space or enter. Right now. Yeah. If. Okay, and then what else? Well, we want uh, to draw tiles, a set of tiles. Um, at the moment, we just do one tile. So we'll do the same thing, and then uh, we can then choose to do the draw atlas version later. Where am I? Render. Draw tile. Um, so we want. Um, I don't think tile paint is actually color constant there. Yeah. I think that's actually used. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we'll copy those down. Okay, that. That's again. This is one of those things where now we can bring tile paint out. Okay, 
and then this is going to be a similar thing. We want a tile set, which is an image asset. And we'll look that up. Uh, tile set asset. And then we want to spy out um, source and destination. I'm not sure I want to use uh, a BB2 for this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's actually a rectangle. I think there might be a rectangle class, isn't there? Math. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. Is that the normal math library? Oh, it is. Okay. Well, that would make it a lot easier than doing <laughs> rectangle from point. We also got the point class to deal contend with as well. If we want to use that rather than the vector two one, like that's it. Offset point and vector two, all with <laughs> different properties. Wonderful. Hey, yeah, look at that. I do wish I would consolidate some of these, you know. I understand the differences, but like. Yeah. It's a lot of options that make it a little confusing sometimes. I think just everyone's, just, yeah. Which is the right one to go with? Um, I think we'll, we'll stick with what we got right now, and I don't want to shake it, but maybe we'll have a play around with what might be best. The other, other option is add your own. <laughs> 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 all right so um all right tile draw so now we have source so two rect um yeah destination two rect so there's not much going on here except for the actually yeah getting the calls but that's fine so Okay, so now up here, our tile set. Um, yeah, so this is going to be referenced elsewhere. So let's get rid of that. Yep. That. Stride is going to be worked out from that. So actually, now we will need to look it up. But maybe that's it. Maybe the answer here is. Or that stays in tile layer. Let's, uh, we'll come back to that in a second. <coughs> I mean, okay. So, uh, size and bounds. All right, so fill rate, let's go back to where we were. We're trying to separate So now our draw background becomes renderer dot fill rect in our box, which is going to be an AABB AB2 uh, from min max. And then our color can come from our level data. Mm hmm. So minimum uh, 
Okay, and our maximum is going to be, in fact, if we get the bounds. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, what am I doing? It should, the, it should just be the width and the size, right? Uh, yeah, I think I did. Okay, so here's where we here's where we're going to change this. So let's change this to A A B B two. And we'll calculate that instead here and say A A B B two of um, in max vector to zero. So back to our background, that should now be all good. That we can also change this back to color. Introduce for color, which I like, because we don't means we don't have to pass it. So this becomes this. Get rid of dark UI out of the model, even better. Right, so background. That's become a bit simple, but it was simple anyway, but that's good to know, right? I feel like nothing, you don't always need an init. Uh, it is abstract, isn't it, somewhere? Oh, I've got entity, yeah. Let's have it as something that you can just override if you want to implement it like the rest. So there's our background widget, that entity widget, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, tile layer is the next one. Uh, we'll do player first because that's an easy one. So this becomes renderer. Yeah, if we're going to do this, then we want renderer to be exported by the game entity. Probably means background. We can get rid of the import for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we want to do renderer dot draw image at offset. Let's well, be vector to zero for the moment. Mm -hmm. and in fact, you know what we're going to do? We're going to actually, uh, yeah, how big is our player image? Let's get our, I think I'm going to, do that. Really helpful. I think it's not a double. Uh, so when we so here's a good example of initialization, right? So we can actually put in here a find uh, is a uh, final. Uh, we'll call it player center vector two. Starts off with zero, and then mm -hmm. we can then set it to half. During the initialization, we can set it to half the image. Look up the image. Right. 
Oh, we could also, I guess, do that slightly bit rather than yeah, just just so we don't make the extra objects unnecessarily. Okay, and then becomes mm, the oh, yeah. and then we'll do that as negative. All right, so that's our paint position, and then the other one was the asset dash standing for the minute. Mm -hmm. And then by a color, yep. So now this is actually quite nice because do you know what? Actually, we even we can be clever about color the way we did with colors. Remember, we were talking about uh, mix and matching the colors before with that show and hide. Mm, yeah do that even better now so we don't hide colors from there colors dot white is now a vector four which means you got the rgb4 and if we treat colors in our renderer as a vector four instead we can then do a um a extension again these are the reasons to use extensions, people. <laughs> Type conversions. Right, vector 4 to color on vector 4. Color to color from ARGB. Now, that's a good question, actually. I just asked me, sorry, I was asking myself a question. I was thinking, is the value that we get out of here? Yeah, I think in the ve in the color world of vector uh, the vector library, let's color this red. Two hundred five divided by two hundred five, so it's a floating point value. Yeah. So we actually need to, if we're going to do the conversion, let's make attention. We actually need to convert this float back to uh, two hundred five. So uh, two hundred five. Six to it. Um, is there a nice way of doing that? I guess we can actually multiply the entire thing by two five six, right? Get final equals this multiply by two five six, and then a RGB. give us the components but does it give it to us in a can we convert to an int is there a nice way to convert a vector for to an int <clears throat> I guess there isn't um, it only makes sense in this sort of situation so mm. we'll just you know, say to in and then we'll take the components. Uh, no, what's it would now to color? I did it right, and then we can then say um, we'll just have to do in on each of the components. So it's like color, yeah, color B, dot two in B, C, D, and whatever. Kind of sucky. There, are, there's a couple of different ways we can make improve this, but uh, it's good for the. Oops. No, you had it right. Yeah, I the wrong button. The key one. <laughs> uh, oh my god. B. B. Right. Oh. And change the extension name. You get a capital O in color oh was that bugging you with it <laughs> yeah eventually we would have caught it <laughs> yeah exactly right. all right so so now we've got two color we should be able to go into here and say color filter to color nice 
and here we can do the same thing here vector four and then yep color to color and then when we pass it in the level data Is there a nice way of componentizing it? Yeah, I think that makes sense because then it makes sense of this FF, random FF that's in here, right? Yeah. So we do vector four and we say, thing is, yeah, dot ARGB, is that equals? It's <sighs> not going to work, is it? It wants a, another vector form. Yeah. So, uh, how is the best way of setting these components? See, that's kind of annoying, right? You say with X, Y, Z, W. And you yeah. need to know what order ARGB is from an X, Y, X, I, G, B, which is fine. I mean, it, it is noted in here, but it's just annoying that it's. Right, that it's, yeah. Yeah. W. X Y Z. This <laughs> is W. So so it's this is yeah. RGBA. Yeah. Which is fine. Um so we'll take this. <clears throat> I know we do random masking, but I think <laughs> it's the most efficient way. My brain goes to the like, you must do it this way. Um So at this point, I'm like, well, if we're going to read like a uh, hex color, we might as well make like a, a utility function for this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so this is where helper functions come in, right? So until, um, do you know what we could do? <laughs> Which actually makes kind of sense. Yeah, do you know what? I think I might do it. Um, so we'd say as string here and then do, uh, Pass, uh, pass hex color or something. Oh, are you going to make an extension on? Yep. String. Which I feel like is is at least makes. I'm not sure if I like that or not. To be fair. Yeah. No, we know the function. <laughs> uh, let's stick that in a new so we want a vector for and this is going to be a um, hex color if hex color dot Starts with hash. Um, just strip off the beginning. Yeah. So you got rid of the hash. Now you just got to figure out if it's eight characters or six. What we could do. Yeah, it's a good point, actually. Uh, let's, where's my layer data? Double layer. So. Do we want just to, to, 
Yeah, I know. I think it's a bit better, at least, if we're going to support Alpha. <laughs> Scott's back, and he's got a driver's license now. <laughs> Yay. A legal one. And I say, does that mean driving to the to the... <laughs> To the service, was yeah. That he, so you technically, you know, it's good thing you yeah, get like pulled over time. going to get the new license. You have some time though, don't you? Around it, I can't remember. It's like you don't. Have, is it like in America? The same, well, I guess it depends on the state. I think there's. Um. Uh, what is it? Like, there's states well, where you don't you, even have to like, register your vehicle for like a month or something, but you can still. Well, normally, normally, in most of them, it's if you can re if you you can drive without the updated plate as long as it's been registered and you're just waiting for the for the yes. to come. That's it. That's it. You wait for the plate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, he, and technically, he's been driving around with an expired license for a month. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So I think we we if we're going to support, we might as well say if the length. Yeah, if if the length is six, um, or is yeah, six, if it's six, then, then what? Just pad it with an FF at the beginning, right? Yeah. Then I guess what we could do, what well, we could do, if it's length is six, then we'll prefix it with FF. Prefix it with an FF, and then then we can just parse. Then we can just go from there, right? Because then we know we've got FF and whatever after that, and if not, then. We don't care after that. Well, if it's more than eight, mm -hmm. we should be able to eight at that point. So, if right. it's not, so, we'll, so you we'll could say it. if it's greater than eight, right? We we throw, yeah. And I guess technically you could put that at the beginning and say if it's well, yeah. I mean, you're only saving potentially a, a blip there with the the one check. Officially, you shouldn't be editing parameters. Yeah, right. You can, yeah. but mm, it's not great. Equally, I wanted oh, I wanted the original value to be output. Yeah, yeah. Right. So now we can say, uh, now we can now find we, it in yeah, color. Now we can parse it out. Yeah. Or value from our color. <clears throat> that should give us the full the full the full set and then we can then say return vector four and as we said it's rgba right so yeah uh value uh shift uh, 16. um so these magical value these magical values for anyone that's wondering this is bit this is uh bitwise operations Let me scroll this up the screen a little bit so you can see a bit better um and these are like standard things that you can do like this is not magical per se um where was it we were looking at colors just a minute ago it was the colors class wasn't it i wonder i just realized i wonder if the colors class the, the colors has helpers for this stuff because oh oh yeah. look hex string <laughs> that's great because it means yeah, i don't have yes to do right? so this deals with the hash and deals with it's full and short so there's this thing with how many components is this uh, converting one. between different colored models and maybe yeah colors. from yeah. hex string there you go perfect there yep yeah. And look, even tells us. Okay, well that's great. Look, it does right. nothing like to do. So why are we Wonderful. writing it? <laughs> Wonderful. Let's get rid of this code. All right, we don't need any of that. Don't need any of that. Start again. Right. So up here we should be able to do uh was it colors, colors yeah, from, from X string, string and, and path to strings. A vector four to put it into. Oh so, yeah, that's true, yeah. Um we got up here. Yeah, do it up there, yeah. It's a vector. Final. Okay, if there isn't a background color set, maybe we'll just do nullable. 
and then yeah so let's do let's get rid of the subscreen bug stuff and then uh, background color if <laughs> we have a vector for are we always going to assume that there's a background color Look at um that. i don't yeah. I mean, we probably can, but we're probably better off not assuming. It makes my code ugly. I know, but <laughs> uh, background color. Let's go in value hex. hex. Um, okay, so we do background color, um, and then we have yeah have this set to colors dot white colors dot black yeah 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 and then if this is not null then we'll attempt to pass it and store yeah. it in although that defaults us to a white. Okay, so now background color. And then background color is just background color. Yeah. Yeah. Background color. Yeah. We'll change this parameter to being a vector form. Yeah. Okay. After all of that, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> that was a. That was. That was a bit of a. Around and around we went. Right. Uh, background. Let's just validate that That's still. Okay. So, background color that feels the right color. We've got that color conversions in there. Great. Blimey. Right. And here, draw a rectangle. So, um, we've got fill rect in our renderer. We want a stroke rect. So, we'll do the same thing in here. Copy this. Yeah, yeah. Um, be quick. Right. That was me just replying to Scott. Uh, right. Uh, you can do play tag team. Uh, I guess we want color and width, stroke width. Yeah. Go back to our camera. Back paint. Okay. Well, mm. what? Well, come. No, I'm just thinking. Like the only reason we have some of this is so that you can see where it is on the screen. I, I and suspect then we're not going to have it, right? If we, I, well, I'm probably going. We're probably going to continue some of this stuff in for like debugging later. And oh, sure, yeah, okay. I was also thinking about the fact that. Um, if we turn on like we can actually have these automatically turn on when you hit debug mode in Flutter. Oh yeah. So that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So so this becomes renderer renderer. Stroke that was it. <clears throat> And bounds for the minute. Colors dot red. Red and two. Point oh. Get rid of all that. Yeah, colors. Yeah. So we're gonna have a look around for the show and high colors. So colors. Game game. Yeah, we should be able to export that with the full lot now. Mm. Yeah, and get and then hide it from here. So we change our precedence. Yep. To game. Okay. What's the problem then? Yeah. What is it now like? <laughs> I have no idea. Name colors is defined in the library. Material colors. 
Do we in, yeah. might be importing material in one of these other places and export? Well, you you get a uh, hmm. Wait, wait, go back. Go Hang back. On. Uh, I don't see. I don't know what. Let's 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 not go down the rabbit hole too much here. Um, what I know what I want to do is to hide. I don't that's need in your export. That's not. I don't need to export anymore. That's yeah. The, and then in here on the main widget, this should be hide colors here for the UI, and then that solves that one. All right, let's close all this down and get back to a place where we can sort of <clears throat> work out where we're going. So, game screen now. This is correct. Now this passes renderer, and don't need. Yeah, I'll do. What else do we need to pass in there? Um, sorry. Oh no. Okay, you got it. It should be fine. Um, oh, I just saw it in the game screen. It was. Well, we already have that in size, yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we still need to extract. That was it. So, okay, so we started doing the, the tile layer. Help us going to go. Let's get rid of that. I thought I already did. Okay, yeah. something's up. The file's been deleted. Let's uh, restart this. This is <laughs> having a hard time. Okay, so yeah, we've also broken our color handling in here. Um, oh, and the fireworks. At this point, I'm like, well, does the not does the other colors have a list? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it does have like a bunch of them. So mm -hmm. let's have a look: two gamma linear HSV from HSV. Here's a bunch of colors. Does yep. it have like an array of them though? Because that'd be really helpful right now. Nope. Nope. All right. Well, <clears throat> let's leave it with what we're just doing which is uh the other colors for a minute and then when it comes to rendering uh, we'll have a, a draw circle and we'll convert the color back and forth but we'll, we'll we can optimize yeah. it more. let's do So we just need to take any color.
much fun we have refactoring, eh? <laughs> okay, so when we create our particle, we're gonna choose a random color. I'm going to want to convert that to a vector four. I think we're doing <coughs> we'll do our conversion again the other way. So this would be two yeah. vector four extensions. Right, extension color two vector four. Say uh, vector four So as we said, it's it's RGBA. Ah, why do I have? Oh yeah, because yeah, because A should be the W, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, RGBA. So we should be able to say R. Is it red? Red, green, blue, alpha. And then these are all going to be integers, which is probably the problem. Oh no, these are ah no, these are the. And this is right. Yeah. Red, green, blue, alpha. Yeah, right. so they're all integers. integers. Yeah. Why are you not there? So what is it complaining about? Oh yeah. All right, uh, we're nearly there. Almost. <laughs> All right, undefined canvas. Yes, this should be draw tile now. Yeah. So I was looking at this whole sort of draw asset business a minute ago, and I was just thinking to myself, do we actually want it to? Do we want to pass the enum for the asset or an image? Oh, like pass the actual yeah. image yeah. versus we do this a little cup each time. I, well, that's just extra overhead. Most of the time, we don't even need to do that. Yeah. So you know, hmm. but image itself ends up being um, the dart image, but you know, and the same could be said for the draw image up here this becomes right. instead of the uh, asset, let me draw the the asset actual right. image yeah we could have a draw asset yeah or a draw image yeah or a draw image you could do both yeah and then that can just like so we had like something like let's do this let's draw asset vector two offset and then what was and then it? the asset yeah image asset And then uh, after four, yeah. Um, this can be called draw image offset, and then do the. the oh, and just pass, yeah. Yep. And then pass the color filter along if it's there, yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know, so it works both ways. So when it comes yeah. to the player, See, we actually look up the size as well at the beginning. So we could still sort of cache that. So we have a final image, image. Mm hmm. And then just, yeah. I look at this and go, well, you know, there's, you can see, you can start seeing like how we could, if we pull out the AABB, we pull out the image. 
from this and have like a base type with those in mm -hmm. then have it so that the center is then based on the image size during the actual render function. right yeah then and you don't have to worry all this about it. sort of caching goes away and it's a lot tidier yeah uh, yeah all right it doesn't, it doesn't like something there oh because you made it finally on delete there you go um uh right and then down here and that just becomes underscore image then yeah yeah okay so there's that and then yeah, two more things to fix so this draw tile same thing um we had this lookup of of the tile asset. So do we want to pass that in and have like tile set? So because the, the level layer doesn't know what tile set, we could swap them in and out then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's do this. Let's look up that up during. I don't really want to have to pass images in unnecessarily. Sure. Um, but we're going to need to have the tile set. So if we have a... Um... No, I feel like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it images, images. Images. Asset images. Image assets. All right, images, and then <clears throat> sorry. All right, so this becomes a image tile set, and we're going to look that one up. We'll look up this fixed tile set for now, and then if we wanted to switch it out, we can. Okay. Yeah. So now we have the tile set. Our initialization. You get it defined twice. Oh yeah. Tile set. You get tile set defined. There you go. Um. I think tile size is another one that. Uh, let's make it. Let's hard code it, and then we'll, we can allow it to be overwritten. So this is. At tile size equals vec to 32 by 32. Mm -hmm. And that. <clears throat> you can't use it like that, can you? Because it's got to be constant, and these aren't constant. Uh, if we do it late though, I was just avoiding that, but we can just do it in here. So we've got tile size, we've got the tile set, and then tile, tile stride. We don't actually need to calculate that because we have everything up here. So this would be X. Cool. Yep. Oh, this, this, this. Mm. All right. 
Uh, so we don't need that paint. Go for our rows and columns. Tar size X, Y, X. Um, so the nice thing about this, we can get rid of this bloody offset stuff. And we can actually go and do um, things. We should be able to do a vector multiplication here. So we should be able to say source offset to source equals uh, vector to this times tile size. Right? We do that. Multiply, sorry, dot, dot, multiply, tile size, and then so that's the same as the original, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then uh, destination vector two, and then we can do the same thing column, row, multiply. these inches so. okay mm -hmm. yep. so tile set and it wanted okay so we've yeah so we need to these are so yeah, in, what do we want we're taking a BBs. Yeah, it's because we're adding with tile size, so we multiply by tile size. But yeah. what we actually need to do is is to create a um, a BB. I'm just wondering if there's a nice way of doing that where we can say so you can do center and half extents intersect rotate. Contains. That's kind of annoying. I guess we could do. Um, so, officially, right? Let's do, let's do this long hand, and then I think we can like make some nice little extensions or something. So, if we did a AABB of the tile size, right? Mm hmm. Does that make a copy of those values? Let's look. It does good. Um, can we then translate it? it? Should be transform. Transform. Yeah. Yeah. Matrix. Uh, Got to make things more complicated unnecessarily. <laughs> uh, right now, I think the easiest way to solve this is to have a final destination top left right and source top left and then when we call it we'll do an AAB, AABB min and just do this uh, might be source It's a bit naff, but I think we'll do fine for what we're trying to do, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think just the I can see how the AABB works, but it is missing those kind of like accesses and, and mm -hmm. properties that like you'd want. Yep. Anyway, let's carry on. Yeah. All right. My hope here, by the way, is that you know uh, we we put an AABB box on each of the entities, and then each of the, you know then this is just like the entities, this you know the entities source box and yeah, yep. or destination box, sorry, or whatever else. And right. you know we could even take a thing where we pass 
at the moment when we pass a level layer, mm -hmm. we're actually passing the raw data model. But what we could actually be doing here is actually uh, looking up, looking up those pre because these the source values are always the same. They're, right, they're not changing, so we could just they're never, pre, they're never change. Pre so we could be pre looking yeah. up all these source rectangles when we load yep. the model. Um, yep. So, and some other optimizations we can do there, but mm -hmm. um, we're almost there. One more change to make, right? In the renderer. Oh, well, it still doesn't like utils for some reason. Okay. So, yeah, I know what that's all about. Hang on. Let me do it. Let me just. All right. So, I'm, oh, I'm good with that. So now we've got, finally, <laughs> I know there's a lot of refactoring work, but I think it was needed to really take this to the next level. Um, okay, so we need to make sure that we put a background object in the game, and then we put the layers in the game, we put the playing game all in the right order, so they're mm -hmm. rendered in the right order. Uh, so that's where our game comes in up here. So when we have add entity, now we can do add entity background with level. Then on top of our background, we're going to want all of the level. We want all of the layers. Mm -hmm. That are in the foreground. So we're going to do that same processing we were doing. So instead of us processing this on every frame, we can do it front. once. Yeah. Now again, imagine our game where the layers do have to change. Then we might have to change the way that we do this, right? Right. But this is the beauty of doing this ourselves. So. Right, so add entity, and this is a tile layer, images and layer. There you go, look at that, just like that. And then mm -hmm. we then want to add the player and um, we can even test this by adding the fireworks behind and then that way they should be between the two tile layers. Yep. Just to validate our approach, and then we'll put the back foreground layers. Yeah, foreground layers. So let's do. Let's do this. Break this out. Add background. Add background layers. Between foreground, uh, uh, background, foreground, background. And foreground layers. Okay. And then this becomes add entity. Put the whole thing to the same. Cool. And we'll add our camera at the end for the minute. Yep. Cool. Okay, so now when it comes to the render, we just get rid of all this. Mm hmm Gone. So voila. Why have I why is it still why is it still giving you squiggle? Uh, maybe it's just a you're not getting any air, so will it run? Uh this might just be because of the we restart. All right. So uh let's restart again. Yeah, okay, so it's broken. <laughs> that's a good that's a good start um it does i mean like the fact is it's rendering the layers so that's the first that's yep. that's a that's a first good thing right so we haven't broken that um what questions what have we done wrong so it's let's like give me blue background uh i don't see the player but yeah, we're the player. Is this our? Hang on. Let's go to. Even if it was double, even if it was double offset, I'm, my keyboard key should be moving the player around, and I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
right and also where's the background so let's 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 start this off from the beginning and let's comment out everything that we don't need so uh, let's do these layers this and these and see if we can get away with just that okay null check well that's oh. oh no that's correct i'm trying to i'm trying to add to the fireworks layer but it's not actually adding that that's because uh my click actually we're gonna uh where's fireworks we're just gonna do it here we'll just say uh we're just this if is attached and so if uh, is not attached oh they have to go away <laughs> um um so we can do something like ball is attached game Attached. The ball is not attached. Just some sort of helper getter methods. Yep. Right, let's try that again. Skip that get rid of the error. Now I can tap, nothing happens. Good, funny enough. Uh, right, okay, restart, black screen. All right, so background. I'm gonna assume that we've got our alpha, ah, mm, yes, mm. yes. Okay, I think I know what's going wrong here. The level there doesn't contain an alpha. And you remember we added the prefix in FF. No, but then we can use the inbuilt X function. So this this from hex string is doing exactly what it's supposed to, which is treat alpha as if it's transparent because uh, oh no. No. Look, 255. Yeah. All right. So let's go see what color is passing and then make sure that's right. So let's maybe we've got some simple logic wrong here. Let's put breakpoint, restart. Time to debug. Right. Okay, that looks like a valid input color. Mm -hmm. And I can't read the flowing points, but I do know that 1.0 one one would be our color. Uh, and that's about halfway. Yeah, I mean, those values seem, seem correct with that. So 1.0 seems correct. So mm -hmm. where do we fetch the background color? Is it drawing it? Well, no, because we're not seeing it anywhere. Here, hit continue. Okay, it does call the draw function. And what color is back? Is it still the right color? No. It's zero. So it got changed somewhere. No, no, no. Oh, sorry, no, that's the print. Sorry, ignore me. That's 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 the two oh, that's the position and the, and the velocity. Oh. Uh that really should have uh really should prefix those. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna do that now. Um, so that doesn't happen again. That was stupid, Simon. Yeah, here he is. All right. We'll come back to what that's doing in a minute. Right. So, level and our color is there. Okay. So, let's step into. What does that step into? I can't remember what I'll put it into. <clears throat> right. Do you know I use the original VS Code stepping keys? Because <laughs> that's what my brain is used to. Uh, right, let's try that again. Okay. Box. 320 by 256. Yeah, color looks right. 
colors, right? So it could be in our conversion. I'm sorry, let me step out. Okay. Okay. So color times 256 puts us back in the realm of ah. Oh. Oh, I did hit, hit stop. I know it is. Oh, no. I've lost it. Extensions. 255. Yeah. I was doing roll around. <laughs> so that was a integer <laughs> overflow. Yep. Should you be gone? I Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I've got to head out. i got to go get ready to do an interview for some. No, I just saw the time. I didn't want you to. <laughs> yep. Nope. I was looking at it. So I'm um, going to go prep. Uh, up some questions for this person and uh no worries um yeah. i'm sure scott will turn up in a second yeah okay sounds good all right um, well yeah. i will uh, i will watch and pull the updates and see what else we can work on yeah no worries cool. well, thanks for dropping by yeah see ya. right i think there was one Right, we'll go for a little bit longer here. Right. Okay. So <clears throat> I think this means it should work now. Let's actually let's just take these brake parts off and see what happens. Hey, we have our background. We have a red red square. And I can move the player. This is positive because that means everything's working. Uh, so it was is because everything was being painted as transparent. That would be why we couldn't see anything. All right. Uh, okay. So let's go back to game. Let's put on those background layers and see what happens. Ta-da! Lovely. And then add our foreground layers and files back in. Well, that's interesting. Ah, uh, mm, huh. Coming up elsewhere. Maybe I have to take a hobby start. Okay. Um, maybe my attached is not working. Let's go take a look. Is not attached return. Let's put a breakpoint here and see if this is actually being called. It is. Is this the same problem with transparency? I think it is. So our random color does our random color. No, it does have a maybe our conversion's wrong. It is exactly that. So this is in the wrong scale. This needs to be divided by two five six. Uh, yeah, two point five. Right, let's continue and I'll restart. There we go. A random all things. Okay. So, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, let's just optimize it a little bit more. Sure, it should be two by six. Right, two by six. Because it includes zero. Yeah. All right. All right. Ah, oh dear. Right, where are we back to? So let's commit all this. We have. 
we're back to where we were, but let's have ah, the camera. The camera's from the player, but everything that's being rendered is not relative to that. And I want the camera to also be centered on the player. So we're going to do that change quickly. We're finally back to that point after all that refactoring work. So let's uh, let's commit this. Oh, I didn't commit the last one. Oh, sorry. Sorry, people. I thought I pushed that. My bad. Um, alternative platforms. Uh, refactor. Oh, damn it. One stage. Read me. No, it wasn't the readme. That's all right. And we want to uh, uh, refactor renderer. That's basically what we did. Uh, yeah, it's so all refactoring the refactor renderer. Yeah. Let's push that and then you can all fetch it if you want to, or rebase or any of that stuff. Right. I think we're getting. Let's get the final. <laughs> Time seems to fly. Hopefully, everyone is finding this interesting. Um, all right, so let's have camera. Where's our camera? Back to there. Okay. So if we say player position minus game. Size so they feel dot um, center. Okay, that's good. Liking it. Obviously, um. We want the camera to be bound to the actual play field size. Play field is calculated by, no, not play field. Level size. So we're going to want to calculate a level size. I think we deleted that code, didn't we? It was the pixel width. No, no, no. That was in, that was, no, they were getters. So we should be able to do level pixel size. So let's do um, another uh, level pixel size. Level box. And then this can be Final, yeah. So, double dot pixel width, double dot pixel height, This play field is really should be camera or I, know, I need to think about that one. But we got level box here. So we don't have sizes on our we need we need to change that. I'll do that soon. Hey Justin. Um okay, so we have our level box and we want to make sure that um, our players the position of all right so we want to copy the game play field play field we want to clone that is it a clone so 
a copy copy from. Okay, so if we have our final view box, um, copy. Okay, game dot play field. Now this would be where we actually, what we actually want to set our position to. We want to adjust our view box. This is where the vector operations come in handy, but I need to set up a matrix. <coughs> I think there's a, a matrix three translation or something. Do rotation. That's what it was like. Set rotation. Ah. Down. I try to remember what the matrix three. Parameters are. What are we adding now? Ah, sorry. Give me one second here. Let me just. I swear there's a trans. Trans. Absolute rotate. Transform vector 2. Transpose. Basically, um, I'm just trying to remember, uh, think about the best way to actually set this up so that um, the play f we, we the view box, that's our final box we want to see, will move around in space of the level box and never go outside its bounds. And once we've done that, we can say that's the camera. And then, given that the way this works well let me show you what i'm thinking of doing uh we'll leave it like this and then we'll come back to uh view box no, let's just do that right um if we go back to renderer if we want everything to be relative to the camera view like we we're saying before we can just go find the camera And then what we're doing is we're saying we want to translate uh, by the camera's position. And what this does, if I do this right, Okay, so now if I move, see what's happening? So this this has the this has the ability to basically mean that wherever we move the camera, that's what we see, right? It's always going to be relative from the camera view. And it just so happens that you know when we translate negative here and then we would draw the camera, we actually drawing positive, which means the red bounds are always going to be where the camera is seeing, right? That makes sense. Now, if we limit the camera box to the level, it can never go outside the bounds of the level, but the player can still move up to the edge of the screen. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we can do that with simple uh, AA. Uh, see, AABB, I believe, has the box checks for this, and this is what I was trying to take advantage of. You can do intersects and get the the overlap. I thought we did. 
contains, intersects with. Yeah, see, it's not what I want. So I think we'll just we'll just do this manually, for want of a better word, right now. So <clears throat> we want to say um, view box min the minimum. So that'd be the left hand edge x. Uh, so we'll offset our. We can, can we subtract view box dot? We can subtract from the two vectors saying that. Okay, yeah. So let's. Uh, sorry, hang on. There's, there's definitely an easy way of doing this, but I'm, I'm my brain is drying and blank right now. So I'm going to do it the hard way, and then we can tidy it up later. So. Um, Subtract the player's position from both of these two coordinates. Min and max. Might be add. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Um, I don't like it. None of this. Right. We're gonna we're gonna start again. So we want a. We want the camera position. It's always going to change. So we'll set Yeah, okay, so we'll set position x, y where we think it should be based on the view box. And then we'll then we'll move it back into the relevant place where it needs to be to always stay in screen. So uh, ensure camera can only see uh, level box. Um, so position dot x if the position x is less than view uh, level box let's take it level box Levelbox.x. Then we need to shift the entire thing to the right. Yeah. So position dot x uh, plus equals level uh, the the negation of level box x minus position x right plus equals. No, say no, no equals. Min. <coughs> so that's uh, left, left edge. Else, if position x is greater than or equal to level box dot max dot x, hello, hello, welcome. Uh, we are also streaming on YouTube, so if you're on Twitch, um, I will post the YouTube link in. I don't know if I do that, but we'll find out. There you go. Uh, a lot more people watching on YouTube. We're building a game in Flutter and Dart, and we build a game engine from scratch, because, you know, why not? Right. And then we'll do the same thing for top and bottom. For our Y's. Uh, y. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go through. So left edge is less than range greater than or equal to. I guess greater than actually. Um, we can zero them. No, greater than two. Um, and then this should be max. Should be max. If I got them the right way around, that's what it should be. I, I'm not even sure to be honest, but let's see what happens. Okay, so move the player. Uh, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> All right, uh, minus. Hang on, uh, plus equals. Hey, right before. Okay. There we go. Nice, nice. So now I can help. Oh. Is that coming through? So now I can move dash up to the top of the screen, around and down. And when it goes into the bounds, it moves. Ah, so I don't account for the height of the screen, uh, which would be the same for the right hand edge. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So this is uh, level box. We need to copy level box. We can definitely make this simple, but let's just we'll do it with extensions. Uh, level box dot uh, max x minus game view box. Not width. Has an old width. I'm gonna add those. That's pissed me off. I find out it is there, and I was just doing it wrong. There are size as well. Size would be helpful. Do that. Does that mean, wait, wasn't it complaining about width and height? What does that mean? Uh, whatever. <clears throat> right. Uh, 
So if we copy it and then so we have view box and the level box is that minus the view box size. Uh, this is about a value box. So our background, let's figure out why our background is what it is. So we actually want our background to always render. So we've got an option. At the moment, background doesn't, it renders to the view box, not the level box. So I think if it just renders the level box, that solves that problem. So ren instead of renderer, we'll do game dot level box, save, blah, blah, blah. let's fix that, sweet, okay, so, What do we want to do in terms of, we have a camera behavior. <clears throat> I think the clipping is next thing. Where's that readme? Let's see, what do we do? Camera follower scroller, finally. Only pin, paint visible areas of the layers. Um, this code, by the way, is accessible on GitHub, I had to push it during the stream, so you should have very up to date. I'm gonna push it again at the end. I will put a link in the chat for those that want to see it. In fact, I'll push it now, and then that can be our camera follower. So, uh, yeah, add camera. Player follow up, player, and make make camera follow player within bounds of level. Okay, I'll push that. Okay. Oh, no, push. Sweet. Okay. Only paint visit area of the layers. <clears throat> so where's our uh, layer? Title layer. Okay, so our title size should be coming in, to be honest. I think I'm not going to make that optional. So now 
Let's pass in the tile size. We have level dot tile width and height. Um, let's fetch that as tile size or like a getter. What I miss? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> heart attack why don't you <laughs> i was sitting there in my little cubicle in the corner of the screen waiting for you to notice i said that's good i'll just jump on the screen <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have noticed no sorry uh, i know uh, uh, so did you see what we did you have you seen what we've been doing no no i just i just got back to my house after getting my staples removed so i'm i'm back to normal now so, I'm a, so you're no longer frankenstein yeah, well, I still have the big piece of metal. I'm not going to stand outside on any uh, electrical storm because I'm basically. I was say, don't stand near magnets. This is a, no, <laughs> yeah, no magnets either. Yeah, don't want any magnets. No, it's, 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 it's stainless steel, isn't it? It's not magnetic, but or titanium. Yeah, that'd be kind of funny to put little refrigerator magnets up along my leg. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have some secret cash in like one of those like little things and stick it on the on, <laughs> on a magnet on this. Like, a hide a key, a hide a key. key. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so check this out. You ready? Okay, yeah, I'm watching. Uh, oh look, it's bird. It's it Does it, it? You don't have any. You don't have any. Uh, uh, okay, it knows the lower layer. It knows it's got some sort of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, there is. There's layering. There's some sort of collision detection happening. I'm not seeing no, anything. No, no. It's, just, it's just layering at the moment. So, okay. so we refactored the entire rendering engine, as you do. Okay, sure. Um, well. But um, it definitely uh, it made sense, put it that way. Yeah, of course. And uh, refactoring I, often makes sense. Yes. Let's see if I have any key. I literally just sat, I walked in, sat down, took off my coat, and said, "Let's see if the stream is still going." And here you are. Of course it is. So here you um, are. I need to roll this up in a second, actually. But uh, I want to, I want to get a little bit more done, and that is, so we got a little to-do list now in here. So okay. what we want to achieve? So we got the camera follower. Uh, <laughs> I only, I want to only paint the visible portions of the layer now, because at the moment. Uh, when we move around, obviously, we're painting all this extra stuff. Right. And uh, ideally, we don't want to be painting anything we don't need to because the user's not going to see it. So um, that's one thing. And then we can then add the collision detection uh, and some gravity. And then that will have our player being able to move around the, the or hit levels at least. Um, and then we add our gravity to that. And then, then uh, we can add a jump. That will be your basic sort of platformer with intersection. And then we can add some enemy objects, start doing some object programming, you know, with um, like the springs, making them make you bounce and whatever else. Uh, add lives, wind condition, particles for special effects. And then we can add the screens. So there's still a little way to go. Yeah, just a little. I, I see one box checked out of 15 <laughs> yeah. yeah you got a ways to go but, um, but i think like like again it's it's, it's you're making good, progress i think it's a good starting thing um so uh so yeah so one thing we want to do now is we talked about this earlier is only render the ones that are visible in the layer so at the moment as you can see here oh that was it so part of the rendering randall if I go yeah. to that now, oh, we had input manager as well. Uh, we added that into today, which was um, now has keyboard input basically. So you're not required okay. to have an impact on Windows. Cool. Um, cool. And we have a camera. There's a notion of a camera that follows the player. Our renderer now, what it does is render function uh, uses tran the canvas translate features to uh, render all the game entities. Okay. Um, I just thought something. Uh, <laughs> uh, so 
sorry, it's not really render now, it's entities run. I don't know. Uh, so we just got this thing which will just run some code over every uh, entity, whatever that might be. In this case, in rendering, we um, we translate the position of whatever it is that we're doing and we then attempt to render with this. So we use a visitor pattern. And then inside of whatever the layer is, it receives the renderer, can do whatever logic it needs to, and then mm -hmm. call the renderer's functions like fill rec, stroke rec, draw asset, draw image, draw tile. So this cleans it up. So we have all the rend actual rendering code on canvas in one place, the renderer. Um, and the logic for what we're choosing to render where goes into each of the entities. And now that we have an entity for background, for example, and that's quite simple, right? It just draws the color. Um, yeah. And we have like, you know, the, the various things like player entity and everything else. And they just, you know, draw image. Blah. So the behavior ends up being quite simple. Oh, and uh, we uh, use colors from the vector library now. So we did some, these are sort of conversions. Oh, nice. Uh, to and from and stuff like that, some extensions. So that yeah. will allow us to, um, uh, what's the word? I don't know. Indeed. Um, yeah, use, you effectively use colors. The idea here was that we were actually using non Flutter specifics outside of the renderer. So we can use okay. the vector math library for like the entire logic of the game, which also means that we can then move this to being like, you can imagine the test cases, we can now render without dot UI. Mm -hmm. We can now do things like um, uh, even doing server side code and running the game logic in the server, things like that. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Okay. So, um, tile layer. So we need to know two things. Uh, one is we can do draw atlas at this point. I guess we need to work out. <clears throat> okay. This, this is, this is pissing me off too much. I need We need to know what row intersects the camera top. We're doing top left origin. So we need to mm. first of all get the camera top left origin. So uh, let's do that. Uh, where is it? Render. So we'll find our camera entity. And we want to get uh, it, the camera entity's position. Um, and that's our origin. Maybe, ah, you know what? Do you know what's better? Yeah. We have the renderer. Yes, that's much better. So this sets origin to be that. Yeah, I like that more. Uh, yes. Uh, and then we can have a... Vector. Vector just sounds cool, doesn't it? Is it just me? It sounds vector cool. Vector is a good word, yeah. What's the vector, Victor? Um, I think I think during the 80s, bits was a cool word, right? Like, yeah. I think it's lost its fashion now, but what, what are you trying to say? Convolution matrix is always a fun one, too. Well, we, have, we now have convolution neural networks. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So now we have origin. Um, whenever we need to do that, we can now say renderer dot origin, and how we get to the origin, we can change it later then without a problem. Um, do we copy it? Let me just check what I was doing there. Do you yeah. Know just that is actually right. That is the wrong way to do that, Simon. You are an idiot. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> set. It'd be better to do, uh, was it set from? We don't end up doing a copy then. And this doesn't have to be. Yeah, this is way better. 
because they're mut they mutatable. The the yeah. So it's better that we with these ones do something like this. Yeah. Underscore. Let's go bounds back to two zero. Oh, it's not back to two. Is it? It's an A B B A A B B two. And yes, Justin, that was an airplane reference. And then, and then, and then, this becomes. I picked a bad day to give up oxycodone. <laughs> Sorry. You you never seen airplane the movie? Oh, you mean like the old one? Is there another one? No, you mean like it was like a seventies film, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I vaguely remember. It's been a long time. Is that the one right. with the one? Oh, do I also remember? Uh, what was it? Oh, Naked Gun. Oh, Naked, Naked Gun. Gun. Yeah, that was his he did later. A of airplane, didn't he? I've got yeah. his name. Yeah, the actor. Yeah, he, yeah. He he was an airplane. That's that was his first. Oh, he day. was an airplane. Oh, maybe yeah. I'm mis misremembering it. Is airplane yeah. a comedy? Yeah, airplane's a comedy. Yeah, yeah, I have seen it. Then I'm gonna get my things mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, done by the same people that did Naked Gun, I think, as well. I think that's Abrams, Zucker, and Abrams, as I recall. AZA. Mm -hmm. I bet there's some online service that I could ask if those are done by the same people. I know. I'll ask Bard. I'll ask Chat GPT. It's always so accurate. Uh -huh. think good All right. so back to him um so origin now is definitely we don't it's a clone it can't change it it gotta mess it up that's the main thing okay so now we get our origin if we divide this by our tile size yeah leslie Nielsen was an airplane top secret the naked gun leslie, series leslie, yeah. and ruthless people so he and all those were done by uh zucker abrahams and zucker the comedy filmmaking trio yeah yep that was bard by the way that knew that no worries. um hmm that's why you could divide it sometimes i just wonder about things if you took a a vector two and you want to divide it by another vector two you would be dividing the x component with the x and the y component with the y maybe i'm not sure what that would actually represent in pointer space I would think the only things you can do with vector twos are things like dot products and cross products, not divide. You could divide by a you could divide by a scalar. Yeah, exactly. But you know, you might have a different x and y skew, right? Like you, I could do it with a matrix. I just it just annoys me. Like like that is so. Basically, I'm taking my. I'm treating it's because vector two. I'm treating a vector two here as a size, right? Yeah, and it's fine. It's, it's just a nine, right? Anyway, y origin x, and then this is going to need to be flawed. Yeah, floor. Um, floor to double. 
wonder, I wonder okay. if uh, so what did I break? Because the integers. Uh, might as well just make these origin X. So hopefully now, if I move around, there you go. So as soon as they go out of view, and that should be happening on the left as well. There you go. So we do floor. So that way, if there's a partially visible tile, you're always guaranteed to get the whole tile being rendered otherwise you'd get these gaps in fact i'll show you so if i now do this to say uh let's do seal just that's the other example here and now you can see there's a as soon as it goes on screen we're getting we're losing that portion right yeah and it goes for round see round round will be the halfway point but still there's a point yep. there where you can get halfway and the tile's not being rendered so on the bottom then we want to do floor or truncate same difference really um and that works so we no longer re really have to so if this was a really wide level we'd only ever be rendering the bit that we yeah, actually yeah. need right yeah, now we to do that on the right and bottom so final uh max x is going to be renderer origin uh, renderer origin x plus uh, renderer size size bounds max x divided by size y and we need to bracket that. And then we want to round, uh, we want to, uh, we'll see it just to make sure. There we go. Same for the Y. Oh, that's X there. Right. So that should be, now we should be able to say, okay, so we have a bug. We do actually have a bug here saying that. Uh, we don't have oh, a heaven's a bug. So actually, we do and we don't. So this can get into negative numbers, and the other one could get into outside the the bounds of our window. The reason why they don't is because we hold the camera in that position. But as soon as we wanted to shake the camera, this would try and get index that's invalid and would mm. probably crash. So we'll do a max here so uh sorry min in this case so it'd be layer dot uh, width have that as max y max x and we'll change the name to these have max column because the units we're talking about are in tiles now not pixels so max column max row and then we'll put this as min Um, 
come in. Row. Okay. And then we'll do a math dot max this time. And that'll be of this and zero. All right, so I think that's it. Let's see, what do we get? Well, there you go. So we're no longer painting further down than we need to. That's cool. And then if we do on the width. Okay, so now we, we're always painting the rectangle for the level background. So we definitely need to, so it was a quick hack from when we're doing it, but ideally we want, don't want to do that. So only paint visible tiles, tick, that's done. And let's go to that background and change this to render a bounds, which makes more sense. Ah. Problem uno, problem uno, right. So the origin of what we're painting is based on where this background is, but the background doesn't move with the player. So can we do renderer origin plus bounds? See, this is the kind of thing that I want to be able to do. And I need to do operator. You can't do operator extensions, can you? Uh, no. Oh, wait, no, you can do an extension that's an operator. Can we? I think so. As long as it doesn't have one defined already, because you can't override with an extension. I don't remember what the syntax is. <laughs> that's been so long. Uh, uh, operator, like operator plus and friends and the argument what 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 operator are you trying to overload sorry that's just like oh look guess what, what i found one of our viewers frey yeah <laughs> there you go uh oh yeah i've done this too i, I have yeah, a, yeah. I have this a video on it yeah, yeah. so yeah. so but that's what i was just trying to do but i think so if I say minus and then say vector two, I wonder if it will do this value vector. See, it's complaining. Probably because there already is a oh, minus. No, no, because the nose, because the body's empty. All right. A A B B two copy this with min minus what is what is A A B B two? That's why. Yeah, minus vector two x y dot max x y minus equals vector dot uh, sorry a b b two. That's from the vector math library. It's a two-dimensional axis aligned bounding box between min and max. It's basically oh, a rectangle. Yeah. Uh, but okay. it's, it has a different type of treatment, right? Like it's used uses a, a min and max representation. And then, you know, there's things like, you know, is this vector two inside this box and right. rotate this box by this amount and intersection. Which, of course, the painting library completely duplicated at an entirely incompatibly different level. Yes, right? of course, because that's why I have a extension to convert yeah. it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a rect is what you're we, telling no, we were saying me. earlier, right, get this. So you have uh, the dot, the, you have point as yep. an XY coordinate, you have right. offset as an XY coordinate, and you have yep. vector two as an XY offset. And I'm like, right, oh. right exactly all right well look, this is great because it means that back here uh oh, i did minus one well, might as well do plus uh 
Uh, so that's a little, does that work? The value type vector two cannot be assigned to parameter type. It's because origin is on the left, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, plus this, there we go. Yeah, it's the wonderful world of operator overloading where it's asymmetrical, yes. There we go. Bounds plus yep. origin. Wonderful. Okay, so now if I restart, we should have a blue background everywhere we go. And if we make it different size, we don't render anything. We don't need to. And the blue background only follows the player, well, follows the camera. Wow. So that's cool. The player can go outside the bounds still. But. And this would have been done in the first hour of flame, right? Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> that's not the point. I know. I know. The point is to have a really interesting, wonderful stream where we're learning lots and lots of techniques okay. just in case we have to do something that's similar to flame as well. I've seen a frame stutter every now and again, and I don't know if that's. Joe, you know it probably is. You know what? Well, it could be because we're in debug and now we're doing a few other things, but I think we can now optimize our tile layer. So we're talking about this earlier, and this was um, we're not using Draw Atlas. So it's right. having to upload the entire tile set for every tile. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll, what we'll say is um, if we have a set of tiles and their destinations, we could then have a draw tiles function, right? So here's your right. tile set. And then we, we obviously need to know where on the screen that we want to put them. Uh, and we also need to know uh, a, so if we have a list, this, this is a perfect example of a record. This is why we want a record. So uh, we have tiles and then we can do um, index and destination. And then what we can do is draw Atlas. Um, and yeah, we'll do, we'll just do draw Atlas like a slightly less optimal way. And then we can optimize if we want to. So the Atlas that we want to draw with is our tile set. And then we want a list of RS transforms. So we need to convert our list of tiles into um, transforms. So tile and do to list. Too many brackets. Too many brackets. To list. Um, and we want to return back a RS transform to the bracket mobile. <laughs> yeah. Is it not exported? Since when is that problem? Let's carry on here for a second, and then we'll. Um, it's literally not like it. That's what is going wrong. Oh, opening bracket. Duh. There we go. Okay, so. <clears throat> okay, yeah, we don't want to use uh, cosine and sine. I think there's. 
is it from components? Yeah, here, yeah, from components, so we can give it a, a rotation scale anchor and translate. Um, we could actually make this a lot easier saying that. If we, our cosine, for our rectangle, our cosine and sine is going to be zero, and then our uh, x and y uh, are going to be what we need. So that's fine. We can just do it like this. So zero, zero, and then our x and y position. So we have, um, this is the source, by the way. Uh, no, it's des destination. Destination, sorry. So tile destination. Uh, min x um, that will do for now Okay, uh, let's get rid of all this. Okay, and then we want a another list. The rest are optional. Yeah, null, null, null. rectangles which I'm gonna make sure I get this the right way around um, the length yeah yeah maybe yeah um, yeah so this is the this is the destination basically of where we want it on the screen Where's it no that's the source that's the source sorry okay let's go back So we can map this slightly different. Let's do four tile, tile, file, tile in files. So much nicer. And same for this one for file, tile, and tiles. So our source is, is if we map, yeah, let's bring this through as a source. Uh, let's bring through the source in here and then we'll, we'll treat the optimization of, of moving the source out later on. So left, we should be able to do just source to rect, right? Yeah, tile.source.toRect. Okay. There is one draw atlas function. And can we use that in our draw layers? So draw tiles, we move that down outside of our four loops. And then what we want to do is say final tiles equals, and we'll make a array. And this array is gonna format, uh, have the same record as this and we're going to pass down those tiles uh, yes yeah, take these out tiles and then we can add our tiles here tiles add and it's tile index it's amazing how many problems records solve that you didn't think you needed solving that way before or you kind of had a hint that you needed records to do that but you always ended up solving it by having arbitrarily wide uh, lists or by uh, custom constructed uh, object all right 
records do make things easier. Thank God. Oh, guess what? What? This size. That's a vector two. So now I can do A, A, B, B. Left, right, left, right, one, zero, one, zero, start. No, I mean. Uh, <laughs> top source, top left. Now, this is about setting set setting the width and the height. So maybe ooh, ooh, ooh. Hang on. I have an idea. Min equals top left size equals file size. Not that this would be any different. One. <clears throat> uh, I'm just wondering if I can do like a extension for that. I guess we restart and see if I broke everything. I broke everything. Was just dropping by to see how far you've gotten. I gotta go take a nap. I'm apparently I'm a little worn no out from no earlier experience. Uh, and, uh, but uh just to update the doc says everything's great. Uh, another four weeks of being really ginger with my leg and then maybe I'll get back into more regular walking and exercise and stuff. So yeah, everything's working great. They're all happy with me. All right. Thanks for having me drop in. I'll see you uh on streams. We'll be around. Yep. blend stuff is optional I guess we want to do you know what I mean this the two there's a lot of places where this could have been 28 tiles destination correct two eight eight Seems correct. We don't actually use the max, we're going to use the source. Okay, wait, did I do the source in this one? Destination. Yeah, this one should be the next one over. And destination. Yeah. So that looks good. Tile 
all set would be great. Let's do from one point oh and scale. Ah, uh, oh, maybe it's a scale. Let's do this. Named really hard. I was just thinking maybe actually it's the scale. That's probably it actually because the scale is part of a good, yeah, okay. The scale is part of the uh, it's part of the cosine. Okay, actually, we don't need to do all that. Hang on, undo this. That's it. Yeah. This should be one. Uh, that should be one. one. Interesting. the result then of of cope the, from components is it cosine of what zero where's it gone cosine of zero times scale I wanna know what this is That's exactly what I want. What can we do? Else there. I was saying draw it, draw, uh, draw tiles, yeah. Uh, let's put a breakpoint in. See what we collect for our source. Uh, sorry, destination. Ah, uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's the RS transform. into Zero. Oh, cosine. Sign the cosine. Let's do it. I'm too tired. 
Okay, so now we have the tiles moving around. Or should we say the player moving around? Um, I think we should probably think about adding a, a debug display at some point, but not today. So we can actually see some of the numbers. Um, part, of the, part of the problem of, of doing game development is you're doing the stuff that happens on every frame, like animations, and it's really hard to like debug that in any sort of real time because just pausing it is not enough to see exactly what occurs. Okay. Um, there's where's that tile layer? Okay, so now we can get rid of that to do. And you know what we're going to do as well? Um, these two X and Y businesses. Let's let's sort that out. Min. So uh, if we can, we can override the, the the divide operator basically. Yes. So extensions on is it vector two. I think we have that. And we'll override divide by a vector. <clears throat> What's the to do? Was it? Was it A, B, B? I don't even know anymore. Origin is a vector 2. Yeah, you better divide by vector 2. I don't know the vector 2. Business. Right, so vector 2, copy. Yeah. And then X, Y. Oh yeah, don't Wow. All right. So go back to our tile now. We can simplify this now. Origin divide by tile size. Two. But I can't operate to overload because origin already has a division and it will only divide by a scalar value. Uh, okay, and you can't. Um, I suppose what I could do divide. Let's see, this does a divide in place. But mind you, origin gives us a clone. That works. That works. Divide by that. And then I still think this is worth doing. <clears throat> we'll do a little bit, a little bit of this, and then we'll, we'll call it a quits. I think. So um, we'll just clean this up a bit. It's a bit long-winded. So divide by tile size. We want to floor it. I, as I said earlier, so we need a floor function on our vector two. So. This, if it modifies the one that we're on, uh, we don't want to return anything. So this would be x y x equals x dot floor y y dot floor. Seal. Now we'll say max, so we'll say floor. C 
so um, we can actually do this with a, with um, you know we'll do a So math.max. Trying to do an X and Y though, right? Yeah, yeah, math or max, yeah. There. All right, so minimum becomes this. So let's figure this one out. Uh, dot, 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 divide, dot, dot, floor. It does have four seal around. Well, that's nice. Just does what I was just doing. So, is there a, like a max or a clamp? Oh, look, there is a max. <laughs> so, the max between. Where is this then? Oh, vector two dot max. Okay. We're learning. We're learning. So, uh, we should be able to say. Vector two dot max of this or vector two zero. See, I want it would not necessarily copies. <coughs> So we can't override the divide anyway. Okay. Um, Theory, we should be able to say better to max on uh, origin divided by this and itself into itself. Yep. And then do the same thing for our should be minimum. And then this is going to be origin bounds. So if we do the right way around, we can say bounds plus origin. That was an extension, wasn't it? Oh, but the result is an AABB. So it's bounds.max. <sighs> Okay, so we got uh, so the origin plus the bounds max divided by tile size, seal, and then that goes into max. I'm not sure if that's better or not. You know. Uh, 
is what I can bring in to max. What do we get in our log? Zero to zero. Oh, so smart. Smart brain move if that is. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't give it a dark UI because dark draw right the raw analysis, but um, the the draw raw atlas would definitely optimize because we don't need to be creating all those objects. We can just put the float value straight into the arrays. Let me figure out what I've done here. Origin plus the bounce max. Yeah. I want the smallest value. Next on my A and B. Next B and C, that's correct. Hello. Welcome. I forgot we're doing on Twitter as well. Welcome to Twitter. Also on YouTube and Twitch. Right. Somewhere. So these start off with zero. That should be fine. X divided by the X without Y divided by the Y that that's correct. Why are we getting zero zero? My did I get these the wrong way around? I might just be stupid. I am apparently being stupid. I mistyped. Yeah. Okay. See now I'm now I'm getting tired. But okay. All right. So get rid of that. Okay. We're drawing in the bounds correctly. We can now do a nice little trick. <coughs> so we go to camera and to its render function. We can now say if debug uh, if renderer is debugging, right? Create a getter for that in here. Uh, size it's not enabled. Um, so there's a global flag that's that's set during. So when I turn on the debug mode. For guides, we now get the red box painted in there. So, what we could do is optimize this a little bit more. And when we render after we render the entity, we could then say in here, uh, draw rect or draw circle entity. Dot position radius and have four colors. Um, UI uh, colors dot yellow dot two color. Oh, yeah, we don't actually want that. So, okay, that's outside of, huh. well, interesting as these dots are, <laughs> they're not being, oh, because I've translated by that already, haven't I? 
I'm an idiot. That's what I am. This should be vector two zero. I could move it underneath to restore, and it'd be fine. But this should make. There we go. So let's make that a one. Maybe two. So now we get yellow dots wherever an entity is on the screen. Wait a second. Oh yeah, wait, what? Why am I? Why am I? Okay, my Minimax did break something. <laughs> this is why we do this. All right, so debug enabled. There's our red border. Oh yeah, this is if debugging. If is debugging. Um, what we could also do um, is take this maybe relative um, above the above the object, and so let's say negative. Uh, well, this is in this is in small pixels, so eight eight pixels above and eight pixels to the left. Let's say eight, twelve. And then next to the next to the draw text, and then this can be the entity to string. There you go. Um, I guess we'll put a size. Let's do. Uh, well, it's it'll be unit size. So yes, yeah, it's twelve. Um, come on. Um, I have that cast. Uh, what was it? Blizzard. <clears throat> when we were doing the Blizzard stuff before, I did a draw string. There you go. This just makes my life a little bit easier doing that. Um, not that I need to draw a paragraph actually saying that. <coughs> so draw a paragraph. Here's draw a paragraph. Ignore me. Here's that. Right. So, oh yeah, we need a vector to offset. Do we want to bother with text line? I guess we could. What parameters do we have? Yeah, why not? Let's have an optional text line and text style. Why not? Uh, let's make all of these optional because most of the time, just want to put this text here and then. Push textile, so we always need a textile, but we could get uh, when we go to ideally, we want to use the default textile, um, and we can pass it in. Let's don't like the idea, but I, I mean, it's workable. I'm trying to remember what you actually get back from default textile. Is it the default textile itself? Oh, yes, a default text now. Okay.
done okay let's do ui.text say textile merge with whatever we've been given if anything wait what oh there's two textiles with the UI textile and the This is the data model one, isn't it? Oh, well. You know what? I'm going way too far there. This is coming out. There you go. That's how we solve that. This becomes a UI dot text style uh, with a font size font size of font size color of Add a color as well, and that's it. So, this will be a vector four again. Color. And if we have a color, then we'll take color. color, color as well. All right, that's a bit of a mission. Sorry. Offset would be two offset. Okay, I think after all of that, we should be in a position that we can draw text at a position on the screen. Uh, so again, let's put a label. Okay, that's better. So, uh, we're going to need to, yeah, this would be like three. Yeah, those need to be fixed point, because that's just painful. Um, fixed
Okay, that's better. And then we want to set height to zero. So now we get um, <clears throat> we get some debug information, and if we're very clever about this, we can then turn this to our advantage. Let's go to debugging uh, the tile. I'll close out the tab. Uh, I'm honestly just thinking maybe I just reset this back to what I had. So that one of these does work, right? So the maximum. Ah, right. Hang on a minute. I think I know what the problem was. Uh, do I have what this was previously? It was. Oh. I had to pop up in the way. Oh no, I didn't commit it. No. Okay. Um, that's what I get for going too long without committing. Uh, oh no, it should be the local history. Local history. Let's have a look. Back, back, back. Here we go. Yes, it was layer width and layer height. So max is the minimum of this and layer width and layer height. So layer, layer size. <coughs> so how did max end up working? Interesting. It's meant to be yeah, math.max. And what does I have? Do you know what we can do? Let's go grab the old one. The local history. It's around here somewhere. There it is. Let's grab these. Drop them in here. And I can always restore them. So divide by the tile size, seal, right? So this is getting out one parameter to min, which should be min. And then our layer, of course, this would always be zero. So result goes into max. So layer size, create getter for size, vector two, height. Good. Let's do this, see the width. Okay, so now we've done that. What we can now do is, if we go back to our renderer, we're going to make a few minor changes now, and then we'll call it quits. And that is our when we have debugging turned on, we won't clip the canvas. And if we have debugging turned on, we'll clip the canvas. So if it is debugging canvas click rect um, 
offset and offset zero at size. Okay, so if I hit save, it should make no difference. If I turn off the debugging on the edges, it still draws out of bounds. Dope. What did I do wrong? I want to click it off. If multiple draw calls intersect with the clip boundary, this can result in incorrect blend blending of the clip boundary. That's fine. <laughs> hey, John, you can come back if you want. Um, subtract and provide a rectangle from the current clip. What's wrong with this picture? Is the question that I have. <clears throat> now we definitely will be clipping it afterwards. Let's restart. Okay, so we're definitely drawing it out, out of bounds here. And we clip I mean I know It's not debugging. Oh god, go back was denied. Saying, yeah, this is it. This is this is for not debugging. Then we want to clip. Oh, see that's interesting. Ah you know what this is? This is correct behavior. But the do I wonder if the col rect on the atlas is on draw atlases works completely different. So the tile was rendering outside, but nothing would, nothing else would. So we've got the correct. So let's do, let's record the size. Now we have a reason to, to record the size. Uh, canvas. Debugging. Oh my god, see, I am definitely not with it. There we go. And then let's get rid of that. Well, that's an optimization. We leave it in there. It's fine. Right. Hello, Scott. Hey, I was going to pause for a minute before coming on, but sure. Sorry. <laughs> um, Nearly done here. Do you want to see what we've been doing? Yeah, I figure you've been going for hours. Yeah, but it's cool. Like how cool is we go behind and in front of things, and the camera moves. Pretty cool. Uh, now we've got debugging, hopefully. So if I hit on this, we get these, uh, like, you know, little text above. And obviously, that's larger, you can read it better. But. Um, mm -hmm. What we should be able to do. Yeah, so there we are. So it doesn't clip 
when you're in debugging and when you're not in debugging Eclipse. And this way we can see where everything's going on outside the bounds, which is helpful. Um, and then finally, I think what I'd like to do is if we're debugging, we can go over each of the tiles, tile in tiles, and say draw stroke rect. Oh, hey, you know, if John's back, come on, John. Um, dot, dot, alpha. So theory goes. Look at that. Here comes John. Swish. He said he was just about done, so I was gonna I was just holding out. Yeah. Come on, look how cool this is now. He's only been going for four hours. He said he was just yeah, I know. About done, so I was gonna uh, we'll get yep, that's me because I had it up in a different window. There yeah. we go. But look at this, look, John. How cool is this? Yeah, I know, it's awesome. And then if we if we do this one one you know, to draw text. And we want to draw the tile index because that's helpful. Index to string and really, really, really minimal what font size. And are you, to, are you going to be able to see it at one point? My eyes are bad uh, enough uh, as it is. <clears throat> no, no, no. Remember, guys, remember this is. Um, sorry, hang on. In, uh, this is in the scale that this is in. So that's one pixel on here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty small, but uh, I yeah. start at a small size. Yeah, so they, are, they are definitely are too small. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's go up to four. Okay. That works a little better. There we go. So, um, yeah, so now this help will help us debug things going forward. I think we'll. Let's make that color interesting. So I, I wish I had been here for the whole thing, but all right. So you've basically just got a blue background and the tiles are anything that draws on top of it. It's different. Yeah, it's different layers. So we use tiled to uh, create four different layers of background. The foreground, the player, the springs, I think. What the is the, so was this a stack? No. Did this base in a stack? It's canvas. Just a canvas drawing. He's creating his own version of flame. No, okay. Interesting. Well, no, really, it's not it's not flame. It's base just a it's just a short, small rent small um game engine, right? So yeah. we've got um <clears throat> I think this is where we'll park it for today because uh, I added some extra things that Tim wasn't going to add, but uh, it's going to make our lives a lot easier doing the next point. So let's add them in here. So what else we do? We added um, uh, better debugging. So, uh, so now we can press like you know, the debug and get all those extra magical yeah. things, which is a lot, makes things a lot easier. Um, yeah, so we've got this level editor called um, Tiled, T-I-L-E-D. And you can just draw your maps with your tile data and everything else. And you can draw different levels here, Scott. Mm -hmm. I'm looking. So there's our background layer, layer one, layer two, and then layer three. OK. So I just realized I painted the thing on the wrong layer. so. So what application is this that you're looking at right now? I literally just said it's called Tiled. Tiled. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about tiles in the game. Okay. So if I copy that, cut that from there. I'm locked. Cut that from there. Good. And then 
go into this layout and do paste. Put it back, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's our so we've got background layer one, then we've got our springs, which I just cut the wrong spring, but that's fine. Let's do it. <laughs> Marco. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. What is going on? Select. Cut. I think it's just on both lanes, is it? No. No. Oh, it's on layer one. Top. Cut. There we go. Lock that. Go to springs, paste it there. Okay. So yeah. Anyway, so that's good to be found there because that would have been a pain. So yeah. So we've got. Uh, <clears throat> let's go back up. So we've got background. The things that we need to collide into, springs we can jump on things later, and then some foreground things we can walk behind just for like testing. Okay, save, export. I don't know if it's that export over the top of the, it does. There you go, look at that, wonderful. <coughs> Pardon me. So, uh, let's, let's change that. So this is, oh yeah, we can delete that stuff from the tile, uh, tile layer. Okay, so we've got our vector of rides. Oh, I just got a bit of deja vu. It's weird. All right, so uh, this was trimming the layers, was it? No, this was just. Oh, this was. Um, Yeah, we had to draw tiles, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, <coughs> add draw atlas tile layer and better. And let's add that in the readme just so we can track that. Only paint visible portions. Did I do that in here as well? Yeah, I did. Okay. So this was uh, that. Getting there. Mm -hmm. And then level down. Next time we're doing a match three game, right? Actually, I am looking at doing one of those. <laughs> All right. We call it sun instead of fly. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I, think, I think we're going to leave it there. I've gone way longer than I expected, but it was fun all the same. Yeah, we never do that. <laughs> yeah, never do that. Yep. Uh oh. Yeah, he goes off the screen. Sorry. Because we haven't we haven't added collisions yet, so he can go off the screen. No, the bob the bob the, the bob that's a little effect that we added. Just to... No, but you actually when you went all the way to the top, you actually disappeared off the screen. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I mean that, that's easy enough to add that kind of thing now. Oh yeah. Okay. yeah. We're getting there now. Um, it's nice though that the bad. not the right now. Tomorrow. Pounds. I don't know, John. I've been sitting up with him about this time of day, and he says something like that. Next thing we know, oh, I know. <laughs> it, it's midnight Eastern, five a.m. London. <laughs> All right. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah we'll leave that. Okay, so uh, that is pushed, so you can all check that out. Have some fun, see what you can do. Uh, submit PRs, do whatever you want. Let us know uh, next stream, as they say. Yeah. And then um, we'll probably be back next Wednesday, maybe before. We'll see. Mm. I do want to do more of this. I think, like, honestly, one more session, and we think we could get our, our little character dash jumping around now yeah. on, the, on the levels, on the platforms, doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, oh, you know what we need to add? Uh, it's really under the enemy, well, under enemy stuff, but it's uh, animation. Some animation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, so, like, so. The, flame, the flame graphic has to make it look like it's actually a fire, the, the campfire, yeah. and then the arrow so, thing. Oh, yeah. the for Dash, so that when he's jumping, he, we can change his graphic. Oh, going right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, oh, why did you do this? Why did you do this? No, I just want to do one thing because we you had to do it, John. You had, had to do it. it. So you're full. John. So look, um, when we do oh. update, look, when you're we do in the update, early, you're, you're in the earliest time zone right now, John. I know. Yeah, it's only it's only the rest of here. us are like at dinner time or yeah, ten thirty. Yeah. <sighs> so, for example, here, if we want to go left or right. We can then tell it to load a different image for the right. Laptop. Load, yeah, load the other image. And you get the flapping or uh, facing which way he's facing, at least. Yeah, yeah. so, um, oh, aren't you in London? Go smack him, make him go to bed. <laughs> um, asset. So we should have a void update graphic, update image, update asset image, I think. I'll do. and then that will take a image asset, asset, do all this stuff. Okay, so in theory, I don't even know if this is actually right now. Say so that jumping, running, standing, falling. No. So we don't have uh, left or right. Well, no, because the way I was going to do that was not actually change the graphic. Now, now oh, just should... reverse the, just flip the image. Yeah. Right. You just flip yeah. the image. So. so, so what we don't have at the moment, when we, <clears throat> what we actually need to do, which might wide now, because it takes two seconds. Paint. Famous last words. Oh, don't <laughs> transform. Uh, yeah. Yeah, transform. It's even better when he's code reviewing someone else's code and keeps seeing little things that can be improved. It's not a review session at that point. It's pair programming. <laughs> pair <or> nothing. <laughs> It's Simon programming what you want. It, it's like taking a 1930s car that's nothing but rust and tearing it all the way down to the frame. Uh, thanks. <laughs> um, when Simon does a code review on your code, the only thing he doesn't change is the imports. <laughs> I changed that as well. <laughs> I'll optimize the imports. Um, what am I missing here? This doesn't seem right. Well, what do you, so what are we, are we trying to just flip it? There was a, I had in my head that there was a transform. I mean, I can transform on, I don't get me wrong. I can transform on the paint. I just, it just. Would this of, work oh, with a scale maybe, transform well, of I'm negative gonna, one in the X direction to flip it? That's no, me. It's me. It's me. Let's just okay. see if this works. Uh, scale. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I need to go make food for someone else. So <laughs> right. you guys need to wrap up. 
and I will catch you in the morning. Good night, everybody. I had no idea he was still here. I thought I was going to come into StreamYard to an empty studio. I, what I, I, Thank I you. happened to pull up a browser and saw live, and I was like, what? Out of here. See ya. So I think. So now it'll basically flip based on the direction that we're moving. <clears throat> yeah. And then left or right. It actually works better. That saves some space. You don't have to have, you know, four or five different images for flying each direction. Oh, yeah, totally. Okay, so now we've got a couple of flips for draw image. We can say, literally just put it straight in here, so if it's flip. Hey, it wasn't draw image, right? Oh, they're not, yeah, let's do day practice with these now. So our flip horizontal is based on that. And our flip vertical is based on this. And that's not exactly correct. <clears throat> so we yeah. want it based on the axis of movement. So we actually need to uh, have a field for that. And so we don't have to have, um, we don't actually have to call update image down below. Uh, no, we don't. No. In a knit, we do, but not in the uh, in the render. Yeah, um, we'll definitely need to call it in the future for like jumping and folding and stuff. So that's right, fine. right. Yeah, I'm yeah. also probably gonna take this code out of player and we'll put it to a general like um, controllable object. I don't know what the what it's like, um, but that means enemies can have that kind of same features mm -hmm. as well. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll get rid of it from here. Uh, what I want to do is have a movement axis. That's what I want. Oh, final movement axis back to zero, and then movement axis. Um, And then we can then do that. Okay. Right, what have I broken? Renderer. Too many positionals, yes, because this needs to be color named. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get rid of that. We're not actually using it. So. Okay. Ready? Left. Right. Left. Right. Oh, no, Ready? it's backwards. It's backwards. Yeah, it's backwards. <laughs> And and we don't need to flip him going up and down, but yeah, we do. <laughs> All right, hang on a minute. Uh, let's. Oh, uh... The logic is right, but the figure, if we want to flip, wait, what? Oh no, because the axis is the wrong. The axis is reversed on yeah. the input. Yeah. Because when you're going left, you're actually going right, and so you're on. actually going right. Yeah. We actually want to invert so the invert the axis. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Uh, is there an invert? No. I mean, it's not that difficult. Just. <clears throat> right. There we go. Yay! Up, down. So we don't need to up down. We can do left and right. Yeah. Like up down, he doesn't really change. So just take vertical off for now. <laughs> Soon. Soon we'll have you running along platforms and doing magical mm -hmm. things. Yep. Yep. Wait. Right. Bing. Yep. That's it. That's it. Right. Uh, flip. Let's set this flip 
higher when moving left or right. Here we go. Okay. Push. Push, push. Done. Right, that's it. That's it. It's a lot. No more. Four and a half hours later. I know, it's fun. I know, it's just work. And I have to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, right, well, thank you for all for joining us. And uh, thank you, John, for sticking around. And yeah. um, I guess we'll see you next time. Next on, time, yeah. Post it on Twitter, um, for the notes. Cool. Yeah. Cool. See you see then, you. everyone. Bye.